watching NASA TV. This is Mission Control Houston. Good morning. You're getting a live view from the inside of the International Space Station. On board at the forward end of your view, seeing the back of his head right now, is NASA astronaut Mike Hopkins. He's assisting along with Jap Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency astronaut Suichi Noguchi, who is out of frame for two American astronauts who are about to conduct a spacewalk today to prepare for future upgrades to the International Space Station's power systems. Already suited up and in between in suit light exercise activities to purge the nitrogen from their bloodstream as they breathe 100% oxygen inside those suits uh, are NASA astronauts Victor Glover, who is uh, situated on the left there, and NASA astronaut Kate Rubens. Kate Rubens is taking the position of EV-1 as the lead uh, for today's spacewalk. She'll be wearing the suit with the red stripes, Victor Glover the suit with no stripes. Both American astronauts have conducted three spacewalks in their career, Kate Rubin's two previously uh, on her former flight, Victor Glover the two previous spacewalks on this flight. You see they're almost matching in terms of total uh, career spacewalking time. This spacewalk will be the 235th in support of International Space Station Assembly, Maintenance and Upgrades, and the third of this year, the fourth spacewalk for Expedition 64. The, uh, what you're seeing now is the uh, International Space Station Flight Control Room. Teams uh, as part of the Orbit 1 shift are uh, preparing our two astronauts uh, for their excursion today. They'll be handing over to the Orbit 2 teams uh, here shortly who will uh, be uh, positioned in the uh, Ficker 1, uh, the room just down the hall. And they'll be leading uh, our two astronauts through their procedures today. Again, the goal of today's spacewalk is to prepare for future upgrades to the space station's power systems. Uh, this will be the arrival of future uh, uh, solar arrays. The goal today is to install some mounting brackets that will eventually hold uh, the uh, future solar arrays. What you're seeing now is the configuration, the planned configuration, uh, for when those rollout solar arrays eventually arrive on the International Space Station, the first set set to arrive later this year. Rubens and Glover will be working on the uh, first two uh, so solar array positions on the far port side of the International Space Station. What you're seeing are the 4B and the 2B channels. You can see solar arrays are planned to go take those two positions on the Nader and uh, Zenith, or Earth-facing and space-facing side of the International Space Station. And what you're seeing now is the planned configuration for when those uh, six solar arrays uh, are all uh, configured in their respective power channels. There are six. Uh, there are six of the eight power channels are going to be augmented with solar arrays. You can see the existing solar arrays will not be leaving. They'll be held in place and continue to draw power, but they are showing signs of degradation, uh, as is expected uh, with, with the solar arrays through their life. They're expected for about 10 years to provide power, and they've been running smoothly for about 15, though slowly, uh, just not able to draw as much power. So the solar array plan now that you're seeing with the rollout solar arrays will augment the existing existing power supply, bring it up to about 215 kilowatts uh, when the um, configuration is fully set in place with all six solar arrays and provide power for all the scientific experiments, upgrades, and commercial activity planned aboard the International Space Station uh, for the remainder of its life. Soichi Noguchi now back in as the suit IV. It is his role today, taking lead in uh, walking through our two uh, astronauts and getting them set up with all their tools and spacesuits, uh, getting ready for uh, heading out the door today. The planned uh, exit time is just about an hour and a half from now. 5 a.m. Central Time is the planned time to start today's spacewalk. The official start time of the spacewalk will uh, officially begin when the suits themselves are switched to battery power. Uh, this will be after the depressurization of the crew lock, which you see uh, at the back of your view uh, here. Three, two, one, end exercise. 
that completes all 10 cycles. Great job, guys. And Ike, just an update for you. We've uh, compared all the data, the fan and pump signatures to the previous two EVAs that you performed. Everything looks nice and solid. Everything compares uh, well. We have good confidence in this system. What you just heard was the astronauts completing their in-suit The astronauts completing their in-suit light exercise. They're just uh, very subtle movements inside the suit uh, to get the blood flowing and uh, purge nitrogen from their bodies as they breathe 100% oxygen in the suit. The suits themselves are hooked up to the International Space Station, which is providing uh, the, the oxygen at this time. Uh, but once the uh, suits are switched to battery power and the O2 actuators are switched, uh, they'll be relying on the oxygen within the uh, suits themselves. The astronauts are being outfitted with uh, some of their tools and tethers needed to complete today's excursion. There's going to need quite a few of them as their work site today is at the very far port end of the International Space Station. This is the P-6 work site all the way at the far uh, port or left side if you're uh, facing the forward end of the International Space Station. They'll be working on the, uh, again, 4B and 2B power channels. This is on the Earth-facing and space-facing side of that P-6 truss. Their work sites today include the mast canisters of the current uh, solar arrays. Uh, the mast canister is the soda can looking fixture at the bottom of the uh, of the solar arrays. And you can see the configuration now. Once the, uh, the fixture is, uh, or the brackets that they'll be working on today, once that's affixed to the mast canister themselves, you can see the IROSA, once deployed, will take out just a little bit more than half of the full length of the uh, original solar arrays. Those IROSA solar arrays uh, extending just a little bit more than 60 feet. Uh, the original solar arrays themselves are about 112 feet long as comparison. Uh, here are the rollout solar arrays, fully deployed, about 60 feet in length, uh, contracted by deployable safe space systems, and of course Boeing, who, who was originally contracted to uh, build the solar arrays, deployable space systems, uh, one, of their, uh, one of the folks they worked with. It looks like you're about to step into Man Maddox replacement. Prior to that, we'd like you to go ahead and do another REBA cycle on Kate, EB1, so that we cycle the REBA to off, wait 10 seconds this time, and cycle it back to on. Okay, uh, EB1 only, REBA off, wait 10 seconds, one zero second, then back on, in work. Good read, and again, this is just troubleshooting the EDAR. Everything else looks great. Noguchi and Hopkins suit IVs for today, uh, getting uh, our two spacewalking astronauts, Victor Glover on the left and Kate Rubens on the right. waited 10 seconds and now back on. And uh, we will be doing the troubleshoot for HECA, but not EDA. Actually, it was for EDAR. HECA was uh, checked out fine, but it's uh, for EDAR. We lost EDAR on Kate. Okay, my bad. Okay, I understand. Um, but now it's back on. And uh, we are standing by for the Mirox replacement. Copy, and we just got EDAR data back, so that's a good troubleshooting there, and we are ready for uh, you to t uh, step into me and my other change out. Copy, and uh, 10.33 for EMU1, 10.34 for EV2, in work for 2.120. Good numbers, go to continue. Again, Noguchi and Hopkins continuing to troubleshoot uh, some of those last-minute items, making sure everything is set for our two spacewalking astronauts today. Once again, they're going to be uh, working on the mounting bracket for what will be a uh, solar array. What you're seeing now is the uh, uh, ROSA 
uh, solar array. This was uh, essentially what you'll see when it is eventually on orbit. This was on orbit a few years ago. Uh, back in 2017, they conducted a test to make sure that this technology would work, that it would uh, uh, work in space, draw power, and uh, un unfurl uh, as expected. That test was completed, and the uh, ROSA uh, solar array was um, was then uh, e ejected from the uh, International Space Station, completing that test. The uh, IROSA solar arrays that are planned to arrive on the International Space Station, uh, the first set being later this year, uh, will look a little bit like that. Back in the equipment lock of the International Space Station, again, the uh, spacewalking astronauts getting ready for today, getting all their tools and tethers in place. You can see affixed to the uh, side of Victor Glover there. On the left is the PGT pistol grip tool. That'll be the primary tool for today's activities. Again, uh, installing the brackets on the mast canisters of P6, the port six truss. The pistol grip tool will be used very frequently to actually affix that structure to the mast canister, getting a little away from Kate Rubens, uh, who's getting situated her, her uh, on the back of her suit. That's where all of her consumables and power and the lithium ion battery that's gonna be providing uh, energy and, and consumables to her throughout the duration of our planned six and a half hours. Unique to today's spacewalk, you can see uh, much better now that Kate is uh, facing uh, towards the camera. On the very left side, you can see uh, something new affixed to the top of her helmet. This is called a HECA camera. This is the configuration as it was tested in the lab. What you're seeing on the left there is a new high-definition camera uh, that will be providing uh, wide-angle, high-definition views downlinked uh, for us to view during the spacewalk today. Of course, we'll still have some of the uh, standard definition uh, views on the other end of the suit. But this HECA camera, the high-definition camera, was affixed a couple weeks ago, tested out, making sure that the connection was good, was drawing power. And uh, the uh, HECA cameras themselves are, are looking good for their first run during today's spacewalk. We should be getting some unique views. Uh, here's some B-roll of, of Kate Rubens herself affixing that HECA camera. The configuration itself is, is quite simple. The, at the very top is the high-definition camera. Uh, once it is completely installed uh, and drawing power, there will be a green LED light that just shows that it is uh, that, that power is flowing through that system. And at the bottom there, you can sort of see that silver knob. That's just a simple uh, toggle switch, power switch. If you're familiar with spacewalks, you know that sometimes they have to power cycle their WVS or wireless video system, uh, essentially resetting it and, and reestablishing the connection needed uh, to provide views from the International Space Station, from their uh, suits themselves. And that's just a simple power switch to, to power cycle that high definition view. The current wireless capability for HECA will uh, allow us to see some of those high definition views mostly on the way to and from today's work site out at the far end of the P6 truss, port 6 truss. Coverage at the port 6 truss is uh, a little bit spotty when it comes to the high definition camera, so we may have to rely on some of those standard definition views uh, more so, but we'll still see if we can get uh, some of those high definition views. Kate Rubens, for her spacewalking procedures today, will be on, at the top of a, uh, a foot restraint uh, to get her the proper angle to affix the mounting bracket to the mast canister. That gives her a good angle uh, at first uh, installing a centerpiece and then uh, some of the struts on the side of the mast canister. Hopefully we'll be getting some good views from her. There's plenty of time on the timeline today as Noguchi and Hopkins, both uh, unsuited in the equipment lock right now, continue to uh, work with the two spacewalking astronauts, helping them to get set up for today's activities.
For those just tuning in, you're getting a live look at the International Space Station inside the Quest airlock. Currently uh, positioned in the equipment lock, two astronauts uh, are in uh, the EMU spacesuits. Copy 0946. I need to a fan back on at this time. Have a torch bulb close and lock. EV on EV2. Illustrated to press. Auto press. Auto actuated to press. ECM perch open and lock if you need it to. This station on one, we started the uh, two minute perch for 16. Copy. This is Mission Control Houston. Again, you're getting a live look at the uh, International Space Station's Quest airlock. These are some live views as two astronauts, uh, Victor Glover on the left and Kate Rubens on the right, are getting uh, situated and suited up and configured, ready for today's spacewalk, scheduled to go out the hatch in a little more than an hour from now. Right now, uh, they are uh, being pressurized with oxygen as part of a test, some of the procedures to get them configured and ready for today's spacewalk. You can see they're already outfitted with many of the tethers and tools needed for today's activities. On the left, uh, you can see Victor Glover. Uh, on one, uh, step 19, the uh, old, uh, need of canister, uh, 0012, 0018. Uh, now, temp stored inside the uh, equipment lock. Understand that will be uh, stored for storage not later. Good numbers and good plan. The Houston station on one, step 21, the time is uh, 0951. Copy. The Houston station, step 21, uh, personnel is closed, uh, 9.51, and uh, we're going to continue with the leak check. Copy.
This is Mission Control Houston. Again, you're getting live views from inside the Quest airlock. The two astronauts are undergoing a pressure check right now. Some of the procedures uh, just uh, counting down to starting today's spacewalk. At this point, we are right on the timeline. A little less than 40 minutes, we should uh, expect uh, the two astronauts to be configured in the crew lock, which is positioned behind Mike Hopkins, which you see at the back end of your view here. With the hatches closed and, uh, and a go for depressurization. We're right on the timeline to begin uh, today's spacewalk, which is originally scheduled for 5 a.m. Central Time, 6 a.m. Eastern. The spacewalk it will officially begin when the suits themselves are switched to battery power. This will be after uh, depressurization towards vacuum. Station, station ground one, uh, uh, both suits pass the leak check. Go back to the original procedure. Great news. Returning to procedure 1.225, step 16, and your go for depress time no earlier than 10.30 GMT. One zero three zero. Copy one zero three zero. So uh, we will start picking up the step sixteen and the start of the safer dawning. Concur. What you just heard was the uh, Capcom from the uh, Orbit One team. Uh, we are right on the timeline. So here is the uh, the uh, configuration for what will be worked on today. What you're seeing is the modification kit. This is the bracket that both uh, Rubens and Glover will take out to the mass canisters, which are uh, the soda can looking fixtures you see on the right there that sort of support the solar array is what they're going to be doing is installing this bracket in preparation for some future uh, spacewalks. Now the brackets themselves are kind of long and shoved into a bag. Uh, they will uh, be essentially a little bit larger than the uh, astronauts themselves in terms of length uh, when configured. You can see all the different struts that are pointing on the uh, modification kit here. Uh, they're configured in a bag and stowed away. Both of the astronauts will take out a one bag each, uh, each meant for two different uh, mast canisters on the port six truss, uh, one on the 4B power channel and the other on the 2B power channel. This is the power channels on the Earth-facing and space-facing side of the far end of the uh, International Space Station. Essentially, this is their work for today. The first task will be installing this configuration on the 2B power channel. This is the power channel that's on uh, the Earth-facing side. You can see sort of on the, on the right and then towards the Earth there. Uh, that is their primary task for today. Uh, the remainder of their time will be uh, setting up the 4B channel, and they'll be uh, setting up that uh, mounting bracket and getting as far into the procedures as they can. Uh, it is expected that through the course of the six and a half hours that they will not complete those activities just the, by design the way uh, that the procedures are laid out but that is okay we have another spacewalk coming up uh, next Friday March 5th and the first task on that uh, spacewalk is to complete the work of installing that mounting bracket on the 4B channel So far, we're staying right on the timeline for today's activities, preparing for our two spacewalking astronauts to head out the hatch. They're scheduled to switch to battery power and officially begin today's spacewalk about an hour from now. What you're seeing now is Soichi Noguchi on the left and Mike Hopkins on the right, preparing what's called a SAFER. This is a simplified aid for EVA rescue. This is one of the final steps before the astronauts themselves are situated in the crew lock. 
What's in the crew lock now is this bag. This is called a modification kit bag, and what you saw was the uh, the modification kit. Once it is fully installed, this is what it looks like stowed in the bag. All components fit inside the bag except for the mounting bracket, uh, which will be affixed to the outside of the bag. Again, the length of those bags uh, will extend uh, even a little bit more than the length of the astronauts themselves. They're quite big. But each of the uh, astronauts will have one of these modification kit bags in tow as they make their way out to the very far end of the International Space Station's port truss. Once they're out there, you can see the configuration. This is the configuration with the mounting brackets that you can see on the left. And once they are on the right there, this is what the configuration will look like once the, uh, the new solar arrays themselves are deployed. Again, the solar arrays are, have not yet been delivered to the International Space Station. What you're seeing now is the preparation work uh, to make sure that once they are delivered, that they can be hooked up and ready to go. The work today is just installing that mounting bracket. You're not uh, wiring anything uh, to get ready for drawing power from those uh, IROSAs. Once each new ray is installed, it'll be uh, drawing in more than 20 kilowatt watts of power each. Back to the Quest airlock, uh, you're again looking at the simplified aid for EVA rescue, the safer unit that uh, will be affixed to the uh, bottom portion of, their, of the back of their spacesuits. This is one of the final steps before they are situated in the crew lock. The simplified aid for EVA rescue provides propulsion uh, should the spacewalkers become untethered at any point during today's spacewalk. Highly unlikely, but it is that uh, fault tolerance that provides the safety needed for our spacewalking astronauts today. As we lose some of the video and audio feeds from the International Space Station, what you're looking at is the White Flight Control Room. This is one of the rooms supporting today's spacewalk. This team, Orbit 1, has been supporting uh, astronauts Kate Rubens and Victor Glover that are suited up, and of course, uh, Suichi Noguchi and uh, Mike Hopkins, who are helping them uh, get prepared for today's spacewalk. This is the Orbit 1 team. Uh, they are nearing the end of their shift as the new shift, uh, Orbit 2, plans to come in, uh, who will be leading our spacewalk through their procedures today.
Now, as both of our astronauts continue to get situated and prepared for today's spacewalk, uh, scheduled to go out the door and uh, start today's spacewalk in just about an hour from now, let's take a moment to look at some of the procedures that they will be prepared for ahead. For US EVA 71, EV1 will egress the joint airlock first. You'll see EV1 has the red stripes and EV2 the white suit. EV2 will pass out the two strut bags containing structure to support the new solar arrays. EV2 will head out to P1 where he will install the anchor hooks for the crew's safety tether. Now this is what we call a slingshot and will give them 170 feet of length that they need to get all the way out to P6. At that point, both crew members will translate to P6 and install their respective bags on the 4 Bravo and 2 Bravo work sites. EV1 will translate back inboard and retrieve a portable foot restraint uh, with a extension and head back to join EV2 at the 2 Bravo worksite. EV1 will set up this portable foot restraint for access to the mod kit install and then translate over to the bag where both crew members will begin building what we call the upper triangle which includes the mounting bracket, a left strut, and a right strut. They'll use their pistol grip tool to assemble that triangle. Once it's complete, EV1 will be in the portable foot restraint and EV2 will hand it off to EV1. Here you see EV1 installing this on the mass canister. Uh, there's a strong soft dock feature that will hold it in place. Once it's positioned in place, EV1 will use the pistol grip tool to drive four bolts. EV1 will then reposition the foot restraint for access to the left side of the mod kit. Here you see the mid strut on EV1's body restraint tether. EV1 will hold the lower strut while EV2 gets into position. They'll work together to install the left lower strut. EV2 will start off by driving the bolt with his pistol grip tool. And EV1 will drive the upper bolt that connects it to the mounting bracket. They'll then work together to install the mid strut on the left side. Here you can see EV2 driving four bolts that hold it to the mass canister, similar to the H fixtures that were recently removed. And EV1 will drive the bolt to secure it to the upper strut. EV1 will then reposition the APFR and get back in uh, after getting the mid strut on her BRT. BRT standing for body restraint tether. She'll get back into the portable foot restraint, receive the right lower strut, and then EV2 will translate around the mass canister for access uh, to the installation point for the right lower strut. Again, just like the left side, they'll be working together to drive their respective bolts with their pistol grip tool. EV2 will translate up for the mid strut install, where he'll drive four bolts. EV1 will have a single bolt. And then EV2 will tighten the clamp bolts on both sides. The mid struts are telescoping, and this clamp bolt prevents it from telescoping any further once it's in place. The crew will then work together to secure the thermal blankets over all of the struts and make sure they're in place, as well as verifying that the pit pins that provide grounding paths for the structure are also in place. They'll then grab the necessary tools and head over to the 4 Bravo worksite. Very similar, kind of a mirror image to what they were working on previously. EV1 will install the APFR, or the portable foot restraint. And they'll work together again to build the upper triangle, consisting of the two upper struts and the mounting bracket. EV1 in the, in the portable foot restraint will receive the upper triangle, install that in place. 
and then they'll get set up to install the final piece to get to what we call the minimum configuration by installing this right lower strut the system is now in a good configuration to leave it out and operate space station nominally if we didn't have this installed then we would need to perform a tie down to make sure that everything was structurally sound before heading back in if there is extra time, we'll continue to build the Ford Bravo mod kit on this EVA. If not, uh, we have plans to perform the rest of the install on the next EVA. The crew will then pack the empty bag with the tools that they plan to bring inside. EV2 will carry that back to the airlock. Both crew members will translate back to the airlock from P6. They'll leave the slingshots out uh, meaning that the tethers will be strung out to P1 because we'll use them again on a future EVA. EV2 will put the bag in the airlock and ingress, followed by EV1, who will then close the hatch. What you just saw was an animation uh, that will be following the procedures scheduled for today. Now, what you just saw was our two spacewalking astronauts uh, completing the uh, mounting bracket installation on the 2B power channel. This is the power channel that faces the Earth. And uh, the schedule, as, as it is written now, is for them to start the procedures on the 4B channel, which is the space-facing side. Uh, but the plan is that they may run out of time. They may exhaust the total allotment six and a half hours that they have uh, before they need to go ahead and head back inside and uh, complete today's spacewalk but uh, that is okay they are scheduled to complete that work next Friday March 5th Rubens will head out once again this time with uh, Ast Jack's astronaut Soichi Noguchi who you see uh, as the suit IV helping our two spacewalking astronauts get set up uh, he's positioned on the left there wearing the JAXA uh, t-shirt NASA astronaut Kate Rubens is already inside the uh, crew lock. She's got her safer unit, which is currently being affixed uh, to Victor Glover, uh, that you see Suichi Noguchi on the left, and Mike Hopkins helping him out uh, get that safer unit affixed uh, to his suit. That is the simplified aid for EVA rescue and provides propulsion. Uh, so in the unlikely event that, that Glover were to become untethered during today's spacewalk, he can propel himself back to the International Space Station. Uh, just one of those fail-safes that helps them uh, to be successful for today's spacewalk. This is the final step before uh, Glover will be situated inside the crew lock. Rubens is uh, situated on the nader side or towards the bottom of the airlock. Glover it will be positioned uh, towards the top of the crew lock in the back there. So it will be Rubens that will be out the door first. She'll be wearing the suits with the red stripes for today, and uh, Glover will is, uh, as you see now, is wearing the suit with uh, no stripes. Once our astronauts head outside, they'll turn on their wireless video system. And for Kate Rubens, she has a high-definition camera that will be test running for today's spacewalk for the first time. The cameras that you can expect to see uh, on the screen. Uh, Kay Rubens will have a translucent number 20 at the bottom of the screen, and uh, Victor Glover will be uh, helmet camera number 22. Uh, correction, it'll be uh, Victor Glover will wear the suit with uh, number 20, and uh, Rubens will be the one with uh, helmet camera number 22.
This is Mission Control Houston. Again, you are getting you are getting live views from the International Space Station. Victor Glover is currently being uh, positioned inside the crew lock today. His setup uh, procedures are complete. Leak checks are good. Uh, tethers and tools are configured and ready to go. Now Hopkins is uh, inside the crew lock with him and uh, Soichi Noguchi, giving him one final push to get him positioned and, and ready for today's spacewalk. On the ground in the International Space Station Flight Control Room, there is uh, currently doing a handover today. Flight Director Marcos Flores is leading the room. He'll be uh, the flight director for today's spacewalk and uh, leading our crews and the, and the teams on the ground here through uh, their procedures. Frank Rubio will be the ground IV. He is, was uh, one of the astronauts hired in uh, for the 2017 class, uh, and took his two years of training, and is now uh, officially a NASA astronaut. It'll be his voice that you hear from here in Mission Control Houston to our two spacewalking astronauts once they head out the hatch. The spacewalking officer today is Art Thomason, who uh, walked us through some of the uh, procedures for the briefing a few days ago. It is his job uh, to know the uh, procedures forwards and backwards and work with his team that is supporting in the back room. The mission once again today is to install some mounting brackets on the mast canisters of the current solar arrays on the Port 6 truss, the very far port end of the International Space Station. You see JAXA astronaut Suichi Noguchi with a uh, communications handheld uh, next to him. He has a direct line to the two spacewalking astronauts today, Kate Rubens and Victor Glover. Victor Glover uh, positioned with his head towards the camera. Kate Rubens just out of frame, situated with her head towards the hatch. She'll be the one to open that up and uh, be the first one out the door today. From this view, positioned to the right of Victor Glover, you see two uh, very long bags inside are the struts uh, for the mounting bracket that'll be installed today. They're quite long, and you see they do take up quite a lot of room uh, in the airlock today. Uh, once they're situated uh, outside of the airlock, both Rubens and Glover, uh, they'll pass out those uh, strut bags containing all the uh, all the equipment that they'll need for today's activities, of course, the pistol grip tool they already have uh, affixed to their, uh, we'll call it a tool belt. But the strut bag will be uh, uh, maneuvered outside of the airlock. The strut bags themselves are quite long, even longer than the astronauts themselves. And the first task will be to carry those back over to the work site and temporary, temporarily stow them in positions uh, where they can start to work and uh, connect all of the necessary struts to the mast canister. All of the struts are positioned inside of the bag except for the mounting bracket, which is uh, affixed to the outside of the bag. It'll be a journey out to the Port 6 work site today, and along the way, Kate Rubens will make one stop uh, to pick up a portable foot restraint that she'll need to position uh, and get into the right configuration to mount the center piece of the, of the uh, modification kit towards the top of the mast canister. It'll just allow her to get that necessary reach to uh, make that connection. Rubens will take the primary spot on the uh, foot restraint as uh, Glover helps her and uh, gives her the necessary tools and struts that she needs to connect uh, to the various parts of the mast canister.
You see Noguchi has again a direct line to the two spacewalking astronauts today, Kate Rubens and Victor Glover, just walking them through the final steps, making sure they're all set uh, before they go ahead and close the hatch. Once the hatch is closed, Noguchi and uh, Hopkins will work on the equipment lock side. Noguchi taking the primary suit IV role and walking the astronauts through the first set of procedures to uh, go ahead and close the hatch and depressurize the crew lock where the astronauts and the strut bags are configured right now. We'll be able to hear a lot of those communications as they work their way to go ahead and depressurize that vestibule. It'll be Noguchi walking around IV today here in Mission Control Houston. It'll be his voice that you hear up to the spacewalking astronauts to carry them through the next set of procedures, which is to switch uh, the suits over to battery power, officially beginning today's spacewalk, open up the hatch, take the strut bags out of the crew lock, and go ahead and translate or move over to the work site. This is Mission Control Houston. Our two spacewalking astronauts, Kate Rubens and Victor Glover, are situated in the crew lock today. They have all their tools, tethers, and struts needed in the bags uh, you see to the right of uh, what is uh, in this view, Victor Glover. Suit IV, Suichi Noguchi saying final goodbyes before he works on the next set of procedures, closing the hatch, uh, go ahead and locking it, and then walking through the next steps to go ahead and depressurize that uh, crew lock. All needed uh, before we officially begin today's spacewalk, scheduled uh, to begin in a little less than 40 minutes from now. That'll be when the crew lock itself is depressurized and the suits are switched to battery power.
Station switchband one for the EMU previous step 72 and 73 is completed. Copy, Suichi 72 and 73 complete. And then I understand that 10.30 is the, the previous time complete, right? Concur, Suichi. Here's the station on uh, one while we're waiting, we're going to do the uh, step 81. Yeah. Copy, Suichi, you're good for that. Houston Station on one, the step uh, uh, 81.6, number is at 0020, 0022. Copy, Suichi, good numbers. This is Mission Control Houston. You're getting, once again, a live view from the International Space Station. You see JAXA astronaut Soichi Noguchi on the left and NASA astronaut Mike Hopkins on the right. They're walking through some of the final steps to get our two spacewalking astronauts, uh, Kate Rubens and Victor Glover, ready for their spacewalk, scheduled to start in just about a half an hour from now. At this time, the Orbit 2 teams on the uh, ground here in the International Space Station Flight Control Room are going through a final go-no-go no go poll to make sure they are ready uh, to go out the hatch, depressurize, and officially start today's spacewalk. Flight director you see on the right there is Marcos Flores. To the left, Frank Rubio, the ground IV, it'll be his voice that you hear, uh, walking our two spacewalking astronauts through their procedures today. Copy, Frank, talk to you, Nana. Copy. 
Christine Enna. Copy that. And Great talking to you too. In the back right, you see Spacewalk Officer Art Thomason. It's his job to uh, know the procedures forwards and backwards for today. He has a supporting team in his back rooms that will be helping uh, throughout today's activities. You see one of the next steps that they are hearing right now is to go ahead and hot mic the two astronauts, testing their communications so to make sure we can hear them. Uh, once they go outside the International Space Station. This is Mission Control Houston. The uh, flight director, Marcos Flores, here has pulled the room. We are go for today's spacewalk. This is Mission Control Houston. For those just tuning in, on the other side of the hatch, uh, NASA astronaut Kate Rubens and NASA astronaut Victor Glover are positioned in the crew lock. The hatches are closed, and they are ready uh, to begin the next series of steps to depressurize the crew lock and uh, turn on their suits to battery power, officially beginning the EVA, the spacewalk today, and heading out the hatch. In the equipment lock, uh, help that will be uh, the person that will be helping them through these next series of steps, JAXA astronaut Soichi Noguchi. The suits themselves have been hot mic'd, so we'll be able to hear Rubens and Glover from the other side of the crew lock. It'll be Noguchi's job uh, coming up here to walk them through the first series of steps. Two, upon your completion of 78 and 79, we can give you the go in step 80. And station copies. And uh, EB2 from IV on the UIA check switch depressed pump power is OFF and the depressed pump enable LED is on. It is OFF and enable is lit. Thank you. And the Houston station, I don't know, I understand that we have a go to uh, proceed to the crew of depressed repress cue card. That's affirmative, Sweetie. And EB2 ID, we're starting the crew of depress cue card. Step one on UIA. Depress pump power to on. Great 10 seconds for the pump startup. Depress pump power is OM. That's 10 seconds. Step 2, uh, EB2, depress pump mass ISO open. EB members expect our tell. EB1, copy. Depress the mass open. And EB1, EB2, monitor suit P gauge less than 5.45. If greater than 5.5, you will stop depress. EB1. EB2.
Popping into frame uh, on the left side there, you see Space Station Commander and Roscosmos Cosmonaut Sergei Rizhikov. At this time in the crew lock, depressurization has begun. We're down uh, from uh, about sea level 14, what was 14.1 PSI. We're now uh, going below 12 PSI. Now popping into the equipment lock, uh, Roscosmos Cosmonaut Sergei Kudsverchkov. On the other side of the hatch, the crew lock is uh, now just a little less than 10 and a half pounds per square inch. The uh, crew lock will not be pre depressurized all the way to vacuum quite, le quite yet. There is a check at the 5 PSI mark that's expected in about 7 minutes from now. The crew lock will hold at uh, 5 PSI to uh, do perform a check, making sure that there's no leaks, that everything is good before they go ahead and proceed down to vacuum. The spacewalk uh, will officially begin once the suits themselves are transitioned to battery power. And the EV crew members, uh, when the crew lock at the 6.0, you expect the alert count. And the next action for EV2 is when the crew lock is at 5.0, you will close the manual assault. EV1 copy. EV2. Copy.
An international coalition of astronauts gathered in the equipment lock of the International Space Station, patiently awaiting depressurization down to five pounds per square inch, currently at about seven PSI. Only a few more minutes until the five PSI hold. That hold will uh, remain at 5 PSI for just a few minutes, making sure everything is okay before proceeding down to vacuum. Copy EV2. Copy 6.0. Copy EV1. Copy EV1 and EV2. That's Kate Rubens and Victor Glover, both on the other side of the hatch, confirming the crew lock is uh, passing less than six pounds per square inch. We're nearing that uh, 5 PSR mark, PSI mark, uh, estimated in about a minute and a half. So EV2, your next option is uh, pop manual so to close at 5.0. EV2. There's 5.0, manual ISO valve closed. Copy, 5.0, and the verify you closed the manual ISO. Closed, EV2. Thank you. Okay, set 5. Now entering a short handover of video and audio from the International Space Station. What you're looking at is the International Space Station Flight Control Room. Orbit 2 is in position, ready to support today's spacewalk. Flight Director for today is Marcos Flores, uh, currently standing on the right of your screen. Noguchi will continue to walk our two uh, spacewalking astronauts through these steps uh, for a little bit once they pass 5 PSI and begin switching their O2 actuators and get situated uh, to go ahead and head out the door. It'll be uh, Frank Rubio, who you see to the right of Flight Director Flores, 2017 astronaut. It'll be his voice you hear guiding Rubens and Glover through the procedures today. The Capcom for today, who you may hear uh, 
voicing some of the commands as the astronauts are inside the International Space Station is NASA astronaut Christina Cook, you see at the far end of this row. EV-1, the track radio, EVA. EV-2, EVA. Thank you. Next, EV-2, depressed pump manual ISO open. EV clear number, expect LXL. ISO valve open. And uh, IV just opened the emergency impact to open. EV1, EV2, monitor suit P gauge less than 5.5. EV1. EV2. As we wait to uh, regain the feeds uh, from the International Space Station, from the, from the inside views, we're just continuing to take a look at uh, the supporting teams here on the ground. We had a good uh, pressure check at 5 pounds per square inch and are resuming our uh, decrease in pressure down to vacuum, now uh, passing 4 PSI, uh, again heading down to vacuum. The sequence is uh, scheduled to take a little less than four minutes to get down to vacuum. The official start time of today's spacewalk will be when the astronauts inside the crew lock, that's Kate Rubens and Victor Glover, switch their uh, suits to battery power. And we'll give you that official time when we have it. Like uh, AV2, next option is uh, cool of 2.0. You close the mine ISO and uh, pump power coming off. AV2. Everything looking good so far as we proceed down to vacuum, about uh, 2.4 pounds per square inch inside the crew lock right now. You're getting some views on the uh, outside of the International Space Station as we eagerly await those hatches to open and the astronauts to begin their spacewalk. Again, that'll begin once the suits themselves switch to battery power. And uh, you can pump, uh, pump power. Depress pump power is off. O S S. E and uh, Frank uh, from uh, 
IV, uh, this is a good point to switch. Uh, so, uh, uh, Grand IV will take over step 311. Good morning, Kate and Ike. How are you guys doing? Frank, great to talk to you. Doing well, Frank. Thanks for asking. We're uh, teams ready, and uh, we're looking forward to a good EVA. All right, I will take a initial tether config. All right, sounds good. Starting at the air mask C ring extender, I have the closed slider lock, black on black for a waist tether. That's going to a second waist tether. Gate closed slider lock, black on black on the first one. Second waist tether hook. Gate closed, slider lock, black on black. That's going to my D-ring extender. Gate closed, slider lock, black on black. That's my left D-ring extender. Also on that D-ring extender is my red safety feather hook. Gate closed, slider lock, black on black. This is my yellow hook. Gate closed, slider lock, black on black. Green hook is gate closed, not locked. Anchor hook, gate closed, slider locked, black on black. It's going to ice waist tether. Gate closed, slider locked, black on black. Over to you, Ike. All right, can you let that waist tether go back to sleep? Sure thing. Frank, I've got my safety tether anchor hook on my workstation. That is uh, my green reel. That green reel is unlocked. I have a green hook to my red reel unlocked. The red reel, yellow hook. Is this is Mission Control Houston. What you're hearing now is both Kate Rubens and Victor Glover inside the crew lock. Uh, reporting their tether configuration, making sure all their tethers are ready before they actually head out the door. The communications has been handed over from Suiji Noguchi in the equipment lock to Frank Rubio here on the ground. He's the ground IV. It'll be his voice you hear from Mission Control Houston up to our two space walking astronauts. Again, they're reporting their tether configuration. Uh, one of the final steps after that is to switch the suits to battery power and officially begin today's spacewalk. All right, guys, I copy uh, both. Kate, can you verify both of your reels are unlocked, please? Your reels are unlocked. Yep, I guess closer to you, or you can throw it in my direction. Oh, let's see. Oh, okay. oh, I can't see it. I'm going to say, let's see. Are you still closer to me? I've got it. Okay. And both reels are unlocked. All right, guys. Uh, we copy for both, and that is a good tether config for both of you. All right, when the uh, crew lock DPDT is approximately zero, both can expect an alert tone. DD1 copies. DD2. This is Mission Control Houston. Kate Rubens and Victor Glover both reporting a good tether configuration. The crew lock itself is continuing to vent pressure very, very slowly uh, closer to vacuum. They can expect an alert tone on the way down. Again, we still have not switched over to battery power to officially begin the spacewalk. We'll report that once that has been officially switched.
In the meantime, you're getting live views from the outside of the International Space Station. This camera is pointed directly at the hatch. We can expect the thermal cover to be pushed open first before we actually see the astronauts themselves uh, head out. The space station is currently 263 statue miles over the eastern coast of Canada, heading into an orbital daytime, though you can start to see uh, the sun now glistening off of the outside, the metallic structure of the International Space Station as the International Space Station heads uh, right over the Atlantic Ocean. We should be getting good daytime views as the astronauts themselves make their way out the hatch to begin today's spacewalk. Okay, copy. I'll just, uh, your legs are over the hatch. I'll move them a little bit more forward, but that one's more. Yeah, and there you go. I'll, I'll just cut them around. Yep. Everything looking good so far. The crew lock continuing to very slowly vent pressure. Heading towards vacuum. Our two spacewalking astronauts, Kate Rubens and Victor Glover, patiently awaiting those next steps to switch their suits to battery power, officially begin the spacewalk, open up the hatch, and head out. Their first task will be to carry out two uh, very large strut bags, and they'll tow that all the way to the very far end of the port uh, side of the International Space Station, the P-6 truss. Now uh, regaining some of those views of the airlock.
This is Mission Control Houston. Everything's still looking good so far. That crew lock continuing to very slowly vent pressure. The milestone we are waiting for here in Mission Control Houston is about a half a pound of per square inch, 0.5 PSI. For the, uh, they give the crew the go-ahead to open up the hatch. Uh, we might see that first before they switch to battery power. We're just standing by as that crew lock continues to slowly vent pressure. Copy, Kate, and we see zero decimal six five. This is Mission Control Houston. We're still continuing to watch the outside of the Quest airlock, hoping to see that uh, thermal hatch cover open very soon. Uh, everything is still uh, looking good as the crew lock itself continues to very slowly vent pressure. We're just a little bit more than 0.5 PSI now, just waiting for that call that everything's looking good for the crew to go ahead and open the hatch. Okay, Kate, we show 0.49. You have a go to open and stow the EV hatch. Copy, go. In work. With that go from Mission Control, you'll see the thermal cover uh, at the center. You can already see it start to fly open. That's the thermal cover of the... Uh, Hatch to the crew lock.
can you uh, pull my feet down towards you a little bit, like to come perch? Let me see if I can turn to find your feet. <laughs> Okay, we see the hatch thermal cover open. So, Soichi, emergency MPEV closed. Open. Yeah, emergency MPEV is closed. Can I need to come more towards you? You want to try going forward? And Kate and Ike, let me know when you're ready for a post detail. Thank you. Sort of a tight squeeze in the crew lock today. There's two uh, spacewalking astronauts fully suited up and pressurized, Kate Rubens and Victor Glover. In addition, there are two very large strut bags. So Rubens and Glover are working hand in hand to making sure that they're in a good configuration for this next set of steps. I can get the hatch open, I just can't get it over center. Yeah. I have to pivot a certain way before it'll... All right. Ooh, nice. I just did it. Nice job. <laughs> Frank, ready for you next? All right, guys. Nice job working through that. We know it's super tight in there, so strong work. Okay, for both, switch power to bat. 
Remember to stagger your switch throws and expect a warning tone. For both, check display switch, functional. EV1, functional yes and no. EV2. Mike, for you, switch power, EV1 and 2, two switches, off, OFF. EV1, power off, LED is out. V2, power off, LED off. Copy, off and LEDs off for both. Disconnect SEUs from DCM. Then you'll install the DCM cover and stow the SEU in pouch. V1, SEU disconnected. DCM cover installed. And with that, the astronauts have switched their suits to battery power, officially beginning today's spacewalk. The official start time of today's spacewalk is 5.12 a.m. Central Time. Again, the official start time for today's spacewalk, 5.12 a.m. Central Time. At the time uh, of the spacewalk start, the International Space Station and Kate Rubens and Victor Glover about to head out the hatch were flying 260 statute miles over the country of Niger in Africa. Pressure gauge, 4.2 to 4.4, and let me know your numbers. EV1, 4.4, EV2, 4.2. We copy, and those are good numbers. And we are about halfway through a day pass, so visors as required. As required. Copy. You two, I'll put mine down when we get outside. All right, guys. Uh, we have a go to egress. So, Kate, okay, you can egress the airlock and verify on your way out that the forward hatch pit pin is engaged. I'll get the fit pin when I get out. And I think I'm just going to go over the top of your seat here. And if you can move a little bit forward. Forward. Okay, it's going to work. 
inside the crew airlock right now, Kate Rubens and Victor Glover completing the steps to make sure that they are operating on battery power. Now with that, we're seeing Kate Rubens, the first out the hatch, beginning today's spacewalk. will be wearing the suit with red stripes today. Uh, Victor Glover, the suit with no stripes. Glover is still inside the crew lock. He will be passing out these strut bags. These are very large bags containing the tools and equipment that they need to install in the mast canisters, the main objective for today's spacewalk. And here comes the first strut bag out of the hatch. Okay, you'll be storing strut bag two on the forward airlock circular handle. I'm just going to put it out for right now. Okay. And then I'll just like get the airlock ripped in just a sec. Are you ready for it? Go. I'm on deck. It is on the D-ring, the airlock D-ring extender. as you put uh, strut bag one on your BRT, that the tape will go towards your head. Copy tape towards my head. Kate Rubens on the outside of the Quest airlock. She's in the suit with red stripes, taking hold of both of the strut bags, being passed out from the inside of the airlock by uh, NASA astronaut Victor Glover. 
He'll next uh, come out and take a hold of one of the strut bags, and together they'll make their way out to the work site, the P6 work site. Inside the strut bags are the struts and brackets needed for installation today. That'll be the primary objective of today's spacewalk. Currently, uh, between you and your tethers, the bag is between you and the tethers. Okay. okay. Just, just for your essay. Thank you. I have my BRT right on it. And I guess you're ready, we'll release the airlock, right? Ready. Coming back to you. Got it. You got the bag? I do. Yeah, you got the bag. And this hook is also to the airlock gear and extender. Copy. And as long as you're okay to egress. Clear of the airlock. Alright. One second and I'll be heading out. Again, uh, NASA astronaut Victor Glover still inside of the Quest airlock. He'll be heading out shortly, taking a hold of one of the strut bags. All right, I see your waist tethers. Okay. Uh, what you're going aft? Yep, I'm keeping everything aft. Okay, all right, and come on. Uh, your other bag's aft as well. I'll pass it around. Okay, come on. Hey guys, we have uh, a minute till a short handover. So, Ike, as you egress, you will put strut bag two. Uh, with the tape towards your feet. And then we'll do buddy checks on the other side of the uh, handover. Okay. Now entering into a short handover of video and audio, we should be regaining that very shortly. At this time, Kate Rubens has already made her way out of the Quest airlock. She has a hold of both of the strut bags containing the struts and brackets needed for today's activities. They'll be installing a modification kit on the mass canisters in the far port six, port six trust. Victor Glover has just made his way out of the Quest airlock. They'll be handing over uh, one of the strut bags from Kate to Victor Glover. Uh, both of them in tow will take those over to the worksite. During translation, we could be seeing some high-definition camera views uh, from one of the helmet cameras, likely uh, Kate Rubin's helmet camera. We might get some of those views for the first time, high-definition views from a helmet camera. And Kate and Ike, we are back with you. Uh, let me know when you guys are ready for buddy checks.
Alright. I've got my BRT on there, I'm just tightening it up now. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna do what it's gonna do. Yep. <laughs> Once both Rubens and Glover are in a good configuration, they'll perform some buddy checks, just making sure that both of them, uh, with a good view of each other, looks like they're uh, configured properly, all the tethers and tools, and the configurations of the suits themselves all look good before they go ahead and make their way out to the work site on the far end of the space station. Another short handover in video downlink from the space station should be regaining that shortly. In the meantime, Rubens and Glover are performing a buddy check, making sure that they each look good before heading out to the work site. The team here in Mission Control Houston, Orbit 2, led by Flight Director Marcos Flores, uh, leading the teams here through today's activities on board the International Space Station. Marcos Flores, lead flight director, taking the center of the screen there to his right, our left, is Frank Rubio, a NASA astronaut, and the ground IV for today. It's, it'll be his voice from here in Mission Control Houston that you'll be hearing to our two spacewalking astronauts today. Behind Flores is Art Thomason, spacewalk officer, uh, working with his teams in the back room, knowing the procedures forwards and backwards, and he'll be walking the teams through the intricate details of the procedures today, installing the uh, modification kit, the brackets, to the mass canisters of the far port six truss. Uh, Rubens and Glover still performing those buddy checks before heading out to the work site. Okay, we copy both. Good buddy checks for both. and. Dry hats. Kate, I also want to let you know uh, HECA is coming through, and these uh, HD views are pretty fantastic. That's awesome. Congrats to the HECA team. It's been a long road. You guys are really impressive. All right, guys, as we pre prepare for our first translation, I need to read you this caution. Uh, keep translation rates below 0 0.7 feet per second with the strut bag on your BRT and avoid inadvertent contact with deployed tusk cables. Okay, so Ike, you'll be translating first, uh, heading out towards P1 under the FHRC. This is Mission Control Houston. Again, you are looking at a live view from the Mission Control Center, uh, International Space Station Flight Control Room.
Uh, the Ground IV Frank Rubio you just heard uh, uh, giving the translation path to our astronauts right now. Uh, they did their buddy checks uh, on the outside of the Quest airlock. Everything looked good. Their helmets were configured. The video systems turned on and uh, all their tools and the strut bags are in tow. Now they have a pre-designated translation path, which means they know uh, the route to get to their work site. They have to take a very specific path through spe taking specific handrails to get there. Along the way, Kate Rubens is scheduled to pick up a uh, portable foot restraint to get her in position for some of the work that she'll be performing. Also along the way, once we regain some of those views from the International Space Station, I already have a spoiler alert. The, the uh, high-definition camera views from the uh, helmet camera of Kate Rubens are already coming in and looking good, so we'll be able to show those off once we regain those views. This is Mission Control Houston. Again, this is one of the lengthier gaps that we'll have from video downlink from the International Space Station scheduled for today's spacewalk. Still getting good audio from our spacewalking astronauts who are making their way out to the uh, work site. It's on the far port truss of the International Space Station. They'll be working on both of the mast canisters out on uh, that work site. The mast canisters are the soda can looking fixtures that uh, originally deployed the solar arrays that are out on the P6 now. They'll be installing a modification kit, uh, a bracket if you will, uh, that will hold a future set of solar arrays that will augment the power on the port 6 truss. Uh, there are two power channels out on the port 6 truss, the 4B and the 2B power channels. The solar rays will augment, augment both of those channels. Again, Rubens and, uh, and Glover, both in tow with the strut bags making their way out to the worksite. Frank and Tully and FHRC, the two carts, and our handrail. Okay, Ike, you will be looking for handrail 3651 for your anchor hook. 3651. EV2's hook is going on 3651. Affirmative. EV2 anchor hook on handrail 3651. That'll be the handrail that's more nadir. Okay, 3651 EV2 anchor hook blocked. Gate closed. Don't block. Good full test. Real unlocked. My load leading strap hook is locked to my right D-ring extender. I have a good safety tether chain. 
I'm going to arrest the case hook and then attach it to 3652. Mike, we copy all. That's a good config for your anchor hook. And affirmative 3652 for Kate's anchor hook. Again, Rubens and Glover making their way out to the work site. Along the way, they are tethered uh, as they make their way out to the work site, uh, making sure they're connected to the International Space Station at all times. Uh, Glover just confirming that he has one of his safety tethers along his pre-identified route, in tow, connected, and it looks good. So he's uh, he's got that all set up, and he's going to continue over to the work site again. P6 Truss, one of the one of the uh, uh, tasks. Removed. And I show you have a good safety tether to hand roll 3652. I copy. And we'll go to release the waste tether. And waiting for your concurrent check. Hi, we copy, and that is a good config for Kate's anchor hook. Uh, Kate, you can release your waste tether from the airlock waste tether and close the hatch thermal cover. Again, both astronauts uh, mainly working on tether configuration now and uh, identifying their translation paths. From a handover, uh, Ike, you will be translating out towards P6, and Kate, you will be translating towards P5. Uh, quick warning, both P4 BGAs are rotating, so avoid contact with the rotating structure, Ike. Copy. Copy the BGA. And just before the 20-second handover period, uh, Rubens confirming that the thermal cover is closed before she begins her translation path, just making sure the uh, Quest airlock is all uh, sealed up and the thermal cover is over to maintain the temperature inside of the crew lock. Glover uh, uh, making his way through the translation path, pre-identified and, and hooking up his safety tethers along the way. Kate Rubens will follow soon uh, after, and again, she's scheduled to pick up a foot restraint along the way. We should be regaining video and audio communication from the space station very shortly. And with that, we're getting views of uh, from station once again. This is Kate Rubens, who just configured uh, the uh, station's airlock and is now heading over to her work site. Right here, you're looking at the view from the HECA camera, the high-definition view on the helmet camera of Kate Rubens, the first uh, high-definition wide-angle view from the spacesuit, live streamed uh, for t from TV for the first time. My gauntlets are in place. Continuing out forward. Copy it. Yeah, okay, crossing the SAR said structure out forward, there's a thinner diameter uh Phrase that I think is the easiest one to translate it for. Yeah. So it's, good. it's obviously the, the smallest one. All right, I'm a fun safe one. That'd be good one as well. And Ike, as you prepare to go outboard of the Sarge, uh, verify your gauntlets are in place. My gauntlets were in place. Copy. And you will continue Perfect. on the well, native path uh, on phase one. Ike, you're looking for handrail 5309. Three zero nine. 
some fantastic views from the high definition view of uh, Kate Rubin's helmet camera. Still in an orbital day pass uh, over the South Indian Ocean right now. We're about to head into an orbital nighttime. Both the astronauts making their way out to the work site with the strut bags in tow. You can see uh, they're quite large, held by the body receipt, uh, restraint tether. This is a view from one of the external high definition cameras towards uh, Kate Rubens. Again, she's wearing the suit with the red stripes. Glover is a bit ahead of her, got a head start on his way to the uh, work site. Once he's there, uh, checking his safety tethers along the way, uh, one of his first tasks is to go ahead and stow that large uh, strut bag. Each of them has a strut bag in tow for the two mast canisters that they'll be working on, the 2B and the 4B on the Nader and... Um, and uh, zenith facing side, earth facing, and space facing. Uh, each of them has a has a modification kit for each of the mast canisters out there. There are two. We'll first work on the 2B channel, which is facing towards the earth. I'm at my green hook location, 5309. Affirmative, 5309. Alright, can I have a seat to cart? Perfect. I'm see Okay, my green hook, I'm going to start with finishing the 5309. Copy, Ike. Uh, you'll continue to translate to the 2 Bravo IEA. Uh, remember the warning about the sharp edge hazard on the ticker and sticker pippins. Thank you. All right, Frank, I've crossed over the 57 anchor point. What you're seeing now is uh, the helmet camera views both standard definition and high definition from the helmet camera of Kate Rubens. You can see the high definition views on the right and the standard definition on the left. We'll get some great coverage of the high definition views, the wireless interface connecting uh, along the translation path to the work site. Once we get out to the work site, it might be a little spotty, so we might have to rely on the standard definition views, but you can see quite a start, stark difference between the high definition and standard definition. Rubens made her way to the portable foot restraint. And guys, you've probably seen we're about two minutes out from a night pass. Copy, and my visor's already up. And Kate, you'll be heading out to where Ike's green hook is, and that's the uh, trunnion where you'll head Zenith. Copy, and uh, Ike, I am clear of the seat of hearts. And Frank, you have a mile marker for me? Yeah, Kate, there's no mile markers out there. Um, you should be able to see Ike's uh, green hook and the trunnion uh, structure that's there, and as you'll head uh, Zenith. Thank you. All right, Frank, I'm at the T6 IEA. Okay, Ike, uh, you'll be looking for handrails 5305 through 5307 to stow the strut bag. Remember that you want the tape towards 
You want the tape towards the mass canister and the handrail towards the radiator. And work on the 5305 or NASA astronaut Mike uh, uh, Victor Glover out at the work site already. He's got one of these uh, strut bags in tow, uh, so it's his job to stow the strut bag at the work site where Rubens and Glover will work together first. So he is stowing it. Uh, you can see on the uh, integrated electronics assembly where the lithium-ion batteries are positioned on the 2B power channel. Uh, that'll be the temporary stow position to allow Rubens and Glover both to start uh, putting the struts together and eventually uh, construct the modification kit. In the meantime, Rubens is on her way to the Zenith side, the 4B side. She's going to stow her uh, strut bag first, put that in place, and that'll be the next mass canister that they'll be working on. Uh, she'll stow that in place and then go ahead and sweep back along her translation path and uh, grab the portable foot restraint. She'll need that for some of the upcoming tasks to get a good uh, angle on some of the installation uh, tasks that she has uh, for installing that mod kit to the mod to the uh, mass canister. Okay, Frank, I'm at 5311. Stop on my green hook. Copy, and that's affirmative. Cape 5311 for green hook. You can see the views from uh, the high-definition camera view of uh, Kate Rubin start to get a little bit dimmer. You see off on the horizon there an orbital sunset. The International Space Station is currently 270 statute miles uh, just south of Australia on a northeastern uh, course across the Pacific uh, Ocean. We copy, Kate, and you'll continue outboard towards P6. You and the FOTF tether needs to go under right. Affirmative. Mike, after you secure the bag, you'll open and secure the lid using the integral lid tethers. This is the helmet camera view from Victor Glover, who is securing the strut bag, uh, the large bag containing the modification kit inside of it, just making sure it's in a good configuration, nice, stowed, tight, uh, and ready to uh, open up and start working with some of the struts. And Kate, uh, you'll also have the tape towards the mass canister and the handrail towards the radiator. Rubens has arrived at her uh, stowing position. She's on the other side of the port six truss on the Zenith side. This faces towards space. That'll be the second work site for today. She's got the strut bag in tow, and she'll be doing exactly what we see uh, Glover doing now, just uh, stowing the uh, strut bag in place on the integrated electronics assembly. This secures it to the uh, truss itself. Uh, from there, Glover can uh, open up the bag and start uh, constructing some of the pieces. In the meantime, uh, Rubens is on the other side. She'll be temporarily stowing her strut bag. Yep, you'll want to have the tape towards the mass canister. 
and the handrail towards the radiator. Aft. Port handrail aft. And same for well, the tape is toward the nav canister. Easy to. Copy. Egg. Glover already opening up the strut bag. That bag is specially designed to hold those struts. All the struts themselves are secured in place uh, to allow Glover and Rubens to uh, work on each piece one at a time. After Rubens uh, stows her bag on the other side of the port six truss, she's going to go ahead and grab one of the foot restraints. Okay, uh, we copy Kate, and uh, you'll be heading back towards the port cedar cart to pick up the uh, WebEx and ATFR. Oh, okay, got it. Copy. Ruben still uh, wrapping up her stowing procedures, making sure that strut bag is nice and secure in place. Gauntlet check before you uh, start the assembly. You'll hear uh, that task quite a bit throughout today's spacewalk. It's called the glove and hap check, just making sure that there are no scrapes or, or uh, scars on the uh, on the gloves that they'll be working with. Mostly working with their hands today, constructing the struts and using the pistol grip tool. And the hap is a helmet absorption pad, just making sure that that's dry. Uh, that's what they're wearing on their on their head right now. Uh, they'll pr perform those periodic checks throughout today's spacewalk. Make sure everything is okay before they continue on to the next tasks. The view you're getting now is helmet camera 20. Anytime you see that translucent number on the bottom right, that is the helmet camera of Victor Glover. Um, 
I, uh, that should be okay. If, uh, if you feel that's a good place to uh, tether it, it should be safe to do so. Okay, Frank, that is in place. My hat is dry. Checking my gloves now. Copy, hat. Gloves are still like new, no changes. Copy, gloves. That's a good glove and hat check. Gauntlets look okay. Say that again? Uh, gauntlets down, so. Gauntlets are in place. Okay, those are uh, good checks for you, Ike. Uh, Kate, you doing okay before we start the bracket assembly? I am. Go get in the bag. Good, almost dead. Okay, I have the bag sewed. Tape towards the mask canister. Enrail is uh, really pointing a little bit more nader, but also aft. And I'm ready to join Ike. Okay, uh, copy Kate, so we will go pick up the APFR and WIFX. Uh, you're going to head Nader on the same trunnion structure that you came up on, and just take care not to loop your safety tether around the trunnion. Copy. Ike, uh, you ready for assembly? Sure. Okay, you'll first want to retrieve the mounting bracket, and we'll be attaching the right upper struts, which should be uh, straps one and two. Hey, some feedback for you while I'm thinking about it. Our plan to minimize red swaps wants to take the mounting bracket away from me. So since the red is stretched out and it's, you know, pulling to the left, it wants to take the mounting bracket to the outboard edge of the high EA, which uh, is not, not a huge deal, but... I think I'd almost rather do the red swap so I can have it uh, stable while I'm doing the uh, work. I'm going to lock that red out for now. Shouldn't be a problem. Okay. We copy Ike, and uh, it sounds like a good plan to lock it out. Locked out. All right, Frank. Got the mounting bracket. Okay. Next, you'll retrieve the right upper strut, uh, straps one and two. Straps one is open. Is open having the right upper strut. 
What you're seeing now is the helmet camera view from Victor Glover. He's uh, inside the strut bag now, and uh, while Kate Rubens is going to grab a portable foot restraint so she gets a good angle on some of the work that both Glover and Rubens have ahead of them, Glover's going to go ahead and get a head start. He's already starting to construct the part, uh, one part. Uh, it's called the triangle. It's on the very uh, top portion of the configuration of the modification kit. So he's going to get a head start and start putting that together while uh, Kate Rubens goes and retrieves the portable foot restraint. It's upper right to the bracket for stretch. That's affirmative, Ike, and uh, I have PGT settings for you when you're ready. You'll be using your short PGT. Yep, not there yet, sir. Do you want me to go inboard of the triangle on the way down? I saw that in the procedure, but... Yeah, uh, Kate, you may want to go outboard of the trunnion and uh, just follow your tether back. And Kate, uh, inboard or outboard doesn't really matter. Whatever works easier for you, as long as your safety tether does not loop around the trunnion. Translate the translation path for the astronauts is critical, making sure that they're following their safety tethers along the way and avoiding any. Uh, and avoiding any specific areas of the station's truss. Again, Rubens is on her way to grab a foot restraint. What you're seeing now is the helmet camera view uh, of uh, Victor Glover, who's already starting on putting together some of the pieces of the modification kit. Okay, Frank, I started in 13 and 14 by hand. I got two turns on each. Okay, uh, we copy. Good job on that, Ike. Uh, so your PGT settings on the short PGT will be Bravo 3, clockwise 2. Okay, stand by. i got to tell this bad boy first. Okay, Cal is passed. Good test. And Bravo 3. Clockwise two, Affirmative. Those are good settings. Bravo three, clockwise two, and you'll be looking for two additional turns for a total of four turns initially. Four turns total, two additional touch dish. And Kate, you'll be looking for cedar cart with three. Okay, there are four total turns, two additional on 13. Four turns total on 14 as well. Okay, we copy that, Ike. Next, we'll be adding the left upper strut to the center pad. So you'll retrieve the left upper strut from straps three and four. And work. Glover making good progress on uh, constructing the first parts of the modification kit. He's uh, constructing a triangle that will make up the top portion of the bracket. All the components and struts in the bag uh, were uh, are specially tied down. The bag itself specially designed to carry all of the different struts. Uh, Rubio, Frank Rubio here on the ground, the uh, ground IV. He's the voice you're hearing from here in Mission Control. 
uh, just noting all of the different locations uh, where he can find the various struts to assemble the correct components, uh, preparing for when Rubens returns with the portable foot restraint to begin some of the first steps of installing the bracket to the mast canister. Copy, Kate. All right, we see you at the cedar cart. Uh, Kate, real quick, we lost your HECA. If you're able to cycle the button for us, uh, that would be great. Okay, I pushed it once. Okay, thank you, Kate. And are you ready for your APFR settings? I'll set it when I'm out there. Okay, copy. Unless you guys recommend for translation now. Yeah, Kate, it, it's your preference whether you want to set it here or set it out at the uh, IA. Do you think I've got two turns on that uh, 17? Okay, copy, Ike. Uh, again, you'll be using your short PGT. Your settings now are Bravo 1, clockwise 2. Bravo 1 this time, copy. And you'll be driving. Mike 17 to torque. Uh, we're expecting about 15 turns, so it should be 13 additional turns. That'll be about 13 additional turns to torque. I'm going to try and brace the tool against the structure so that way I can react to my PGT, but the bracket will still move. So I'm going to use the tool to stabilize my PGT, and that way hopefully nothing moves. Okay, we copy and uh, we're good with that plan. Right. Glover making good progress on uh, constructing what's called the upper triangle. This is the top portion that makes up the bracket, the modification kit that will hold a future set of solar arrays. He got the bolts hand started and is now just finishing up the job with his pistol grip tool, the uh, space uh, power drill. Got a black line that's flush. If you can see it in my WBS, I can see the bolt head with the black line flush and the tip of the bolt out the back side in the center pin. Can you see that? Okay, we copy, Ike. Uh, we're checking. Can you see it? Uh, we can see it. Yep, uh, we're just checking and making sure that the uh, turns were okay. Copy. So I understand you had a total of seven turns? Correct. And also, for a data point, it looks like the bolt on the other side. Okay, we copy. I Okay, Pike, we're going to uh, continue checking on this uh, bolt, but we're going to go ahead and move on. So you can release the rat from the right strut. Uh, I'll do that after I'm done with the bolt, if you're okay with that. Okay, that sounds good. Uh, so we will next assemble the left upper strut to the mounting bracket. It Here. is assembled two turns by hand. Okay, great. Good job. Uh, so you'll want to drive Mike 15 for a total of four turns, 
Uh, this will be two additional turns, and your settings are Bravo 3, Clockwise 2 on your short PGT. Can you see Bravo 3, Clockwise 2? Two additional turns on uh, was it just one of them? Yep, uh, so you'll drive Mike 15 for four turns. Mike 15. Okay, we copy, and now you will drive Mike 16 to torque. We anticipate 24 turns, so 22 additional turns. Copy, 22 additional turns, 16 to torque. Again, Glover uh, continuing to assemble that upper triangle, the bracket uh, that will consist the top portion of the modification kit for future solar rays. In the meantime, we're getting those high-definition views from the helmet camera of Kate Rubens. Looks like she got the uh, portable foot restraint out of its stowed position. Uh, she's going to uh, tether it to herself and carry it over to the work site. Uh, the first position for the portable foot restraint will be the center of the mast canister, allowing her to install that upper triangle that Glover is currently assembling. Okay, we got 14 and a half additional turns. Green light 18.2 on the torque, and the black line is flush. Okay, we copy 14 and a half additional turns, 18.2, green light and black line flush. Uh, Frank, I'm gonna have to, uh, okay, so I forgot to put the tab underneath the, the part that goes from the left upper strut to the mounting bracket, I didn't put the tab underneath. Okay, Ike, uh, yeah, so we'll have to back those uh, two bolts out to do that. So I'll have settings for you here shortly. Okay, stand by. And so, Ike, the settings for that will be Bravo 3, counterclockwise 2. Copy Bravo 3. Counterclockwise, too. Okay, mapping those up. And Kate, it looks like the uh, APFR is on the WIFX, and uh, have you started your translation yet? Okay. Okay. okay, great job on that. Frank, yes, APFR is on my, APFR with XL on my BRT, and headed back towards. Copy, Kate. And you'll be heading uh, back towards the uh, 2 Bravo IEA. Copy. Okay, Frank, 15 and 16 are corrected. Now the bracket tab is in. Both bolts have two turns by hand on them. Copy, Ike. And so, Ike, uh, what we're going to do is just uh, redo these as before, and then we're going to go back to Mike 17 and try that one again. So first, uh, Mike 15, you want a total of four turns, so two additional turns, with Bravo 3, clockwise 2. Bravo 3, clockwise 2, in work. 
a good view of Kate Rubens as she makes her way back to the work site. She's going to tag up with uh, Victor Glover, who's currently assembling the upper triangle portion of the bracket that consists of the modification kit. What you're seeing is Kate Rubens with the portable foot restraint in tow. She got that removed from its stowed position, has it... Uh, connected to her by way of tether and she'll be making her way over to the work site. Her next steps will be uh, setting up that foot restraint for the next series of steps. Uh, Glover already ahead on his tasks and constructing the upper triangle by himself. Uh, he'll be handing that upper triangle over to Kate Rubens once she's uh, secured and in position with inside of the uh, portable foot restraint. Okay, can you verify your gauntlets are in place, please? Confirm. They're in place. Thank you. Frank on 16. Uh, I hit the button again on accident. Sorry. I had 21 additional turns. Would you like me to put the PGT on it and, and work it out again? I hit the button after reaching my torque on accident. Hi, uh, affirmative. If you could torque it one more time, please. Like 18.5 actual torque. Copy 18.5, green light, 21 additional turns, and confirm black line is flush. Black line flush. Okay, that makes that a good bolt. And now we'll go back to mic 15, and we will, uh, same settings, approximately 20 additional turns for a total of 24. That's going work. Ike, you're looking good. Okay. A good view of uh, Kate Rubens there on the right of your screen and uh, Victor Glover on the left. We're about five minutes away from a day pass and uh, also LOS in about five minutes. I'll let you know when we get short, closer to that. So with the day pass, we'll start seeing the views from the outside of the International Space Station get a little bit brighter. Glover making good progress on the upper bracket, uh, finishing one of the bolts needed to secure the upper triangle. He's working on the next bolt. Just the corner there. Now you're getting views from the high definition camera of Kate Rubin's uh, helmet camera assembly. As she makes her way to the work site, she's going to be installing that portable foot restraint that she has in tow. And it was 19 additional turns. I copy 18.6, 19 additional turns, green light. Confirm black line flush. Black line flush. All right, Ike, uh, we think that's a good bolt on mic 15. Uh, we'll go back to mic 17 and try that one again. Your settings for that will be Bravo 1, clockwise 2. That'll be Bravo 1. Like was two, six, one, okay, All right, Frank, let's see with 38. Roger, Kate, and you'll install the uh, WIFX on 38. I'll have those settings when you're ready. Kate Rubens has arrived at the work site. Her next task will be to install that portable foot restraint on the designated work site interface, giving her the proper angle to make some of the next uh, procedures of installing that uh, upper triangle that you see Victor Glover is currently assembling. The helmet camera view you're seeing, number 20, is the helmet camera view from Victor Glover.
again, the black line is flush, and it's the metric that looks the same. There's three threads through the bottom into the you know, uh, answer pad, plug is the portion uh, showing out the other side. It's identical to the, to the upper right strut. Copy, I and Frank, I'll take call for the whistle. Okay, uh, Kate, your clocking will be six. And Ike, that is a good bolt on Mike 17. So next we'll be driving Mike 13 and 14. That's the right upper strut to mounting bracket. Okay, copy. And uh, which rivet can I take off? You can release the rat from the left strut and also from the right strut. It didn't work. I think I'll take your pitch and extension on the left. Hi, Kate. Uh, with X settings will be six, golf five. So pitch of five, extension of, uh, correction, pitch of golf, extension of five. And Ike, your settings for your right upper strut to mounting bracket will be Bravo 3, clockwise 2. Bravo 3, clockwise 2. And okay. uh, what's the expected turns? And uh, the expected will be 20 on both. We'll be driving both to torque. And for I'm going to have to pitch it up. I do not have a good pull just up yet. So I have my BRT wet. Copy, Kate. And guys, we have about 30 seconds to a handover. Uh, so, Ike, again, you'll be driving Mike 14 and 13 to torque. We anticipate 20 additional turns. Before we lose this video communication from the International Space Station, we're entering into an orbital daytime. The views uh, from the helmet cameras of both of the astronauts continuing to get brighter uh, before we lose those views temporarily. We're expected to regain them very shortly. In the meantime, uh, both of the astronauts are making great progress on some of their first steps to construct the modification kit needed to hold a future set of solar arrays and mount them to the current mast canisters of the solar arrays on the far side of the International Space Station, the Port 6 truss. Victor Glover is uh, finalizing the assembly of what's called the upper triangle that makes up the top portion of the uh, configuration of the bracket. And uh, Kate Rubens is installing the portable foot restraint that'll get her in a good position to mount that upper triangle to the top portion of the mast canister. And you can continue with uh, Mike 13. Here in the room, you're getting a live view from the International Space Station Flight Control Room. The team's here, led by Flight Director Marcos Flores. The voice you're hearing from here in Mission Control is the ground IV. That's Frank Rubio, a uh, NASA astronaut uh, hired in to the 2017 astronaut class. The spacewalk procedures are being relayed to Frank Rubio by uh, spacewalk officer Art Thomason. Mark 13. We're checking. 
He's working with him, his teams in the back room, uh, going over the intricate procedures, uh, understanding them forwards and backwards as they relay them, relay them uh, to Frank Rubio and uh, to back over to Kate Rubens and Victor Glover on the International Space Station. Now regaining those views and getting some views of the far port side of the International Space Station. You see Rubens on the right and, uh, and uh, Glover on the left. You can see the uh, construction of the upper triangle, that uh, darker silver portion is the uh, mounting bracket. That is what will eventually hold the uh, IROSA uh, solar arrays that will be delivered later this year, uh, at least the first two sets. Also regaining those high definition views from the helmet camera of uh, Kate Rubens. And Ike on mic 13 and 14, those uh, torques were slightly lower than expected. Can you verify that you have a Bravo 3 setting on your PGT? Okay, good, stand by. You can see Rubens on the left there, the suit with the red stripes uh, configuring the portable foot restraint in the center of what is the uh, mast canister. That's the soda can looking structure off to the left. That's going to give her a good position to reach towards the top of that uh, where the, she will install the uh, upper triangle that Glover has been putting together. There's something called a center pad uh, that is specifically designed to mount at the top portion of that mast canister. They're configuring their settings of the pistol grip tool and the uh, portable foot restraint needed before getting situated for the uh, first assembly, the, uh, the first part of the assembling and, and installing that modification kit onto the mast canister. Okay, copy, thank you. And Ike, if you can uh, switch over to Bravo 3 and drive those bolts again, please. Bravo 3 is set. This is 1314, correct? Mike 13 and Mike 14. Apex extension is 6, ATFR copying is 12. Ready for ATFR pitch. Uh, copy, Kate, and the WIFX extension should be 5. Sorry, it is 5. Okay, copy 5. And your ATFR settings will be 12, Tango, Tango, Foxtrot, 12. Copy, sorry, 12. In the Tango Fox 12. Okay, Frank, I got a quarter return on each and 18.4 on uh, uh, 18.4 on 14 and 18.3 on my 13. We got the ICANN, we're checking. You see Glover uh, putting down his uh, helmet shield, the gold visor, uh, that protects his view from the sun as the two astronauts uh, enter into an orbital daytime. The station is now in that orbital daytime over Canada, uh, approaching a southeastern uh, course over the Atlantic Ocean. Rubens is configuring the foot restraint to make sure it's in the right angle, giving her the proper position to eventually install that upper triangle that you see within this view uh, that uh, Glover is finalizing the installation of with a, driving a couple of those last bolts.
Dyke, uh, we just got word, Mike 13 and 14 are good to go. Uh, so next you will move the long PGT, the 716th PGT, to the right upper strut handrail stanchion near the center pad. And you can use both the right and an adjustable as needed. Good work. So with a good configuration on that upper triangle that Glover has just finished uh, putting together, his next task will be uh, stowing the pistol grip tool, that space drill, onto the upper triangle. Uh, so when he hands it off to Kate Rubens, who's going to enter into this foot restraint that you're seeing from this view, uh, once she gets in a good position and puts the upper triangle in place, that pistol grip tool will be right uh, within her reach so she can start uh, bolting that center pad uh, to the upper portion of the mast canister. Okay, uh, copy and understand 12 Tango Tango Foxtrot 12 are set. And Kate, can you verify the pitch knob is popped out? Checking. Okay, copy. Those are uh, good settings for the WIFX and APFR. And Kate, I'll take a glove, hap, and gauntlet check. Okay. Hey guys. Okay. Awesome. And great job uh, to both of you. Uh, Ike, you did a great job building that triangle by yourself, man. So, Kate, you can just ingress the APFR at this point. Frank, the uh, ET is in the handrail, near the center pad on the right for strips. Uh, good to not on the left for strips. No, it didn't happen. Copy it. And Kate, as you uh, ingress the APFR, do you guys need a reminder for the movement cautions uh, as far as cyclic mo movement and forces on the uh, mod kit structure? Let's see, 40 pounds, three seconds late, and that's the quick movement. Good words, Kate. So you're getting a, uh, a great view of both astronauts. You see uh, Kate Rubens off to the right there. She's in the suit with the red stripes. She's going to ingress or enter the uh, portable foot restraint. Uh, you see Glover off to the left there, the suit with no stripes. He's already constructed that upper triangle. That's the first section of the bracket, the uh, modification kit for installing the future solar rays. He's already put that together. Everything's bolted up. And he's uh, also strapped the pistol grip tool, already set to the configuration that Kate Rubens will need once he hands it off to her. As uh, Kate is ingressing, if you have time to verify that the pit pins and MOI on the on the center pad are appropriately configured. Uh, the one for the left strut is still folded up, but I can uh, install that now. Okay, we'll take that now. Right. 
and uh, I'll start with the uh, tip pin into this little uh, bracket. Frank, ingress. Copy. And copy, Kate. Good job. Pins in with a good pull Copy, and you'll be transferring the upper triangle with PGT to Kate. Kate, as you receive the assembly, you'll attach your red to the right mounting bracket tether point. Copy. All right, Kate Rubens is in place in the portable foot restraint, and uh, Glover has the upper triangle completely assembled. Now he'll hand it off to Kate Rubens. They have to make sure the uh, bracket is tethered at all points, currently tethered uh, to Glover, and they'll make a, a handover to switch it to Kate Rubin's tether. Again, she doesn't have to worry about the pistol grip tool, the uh, space drill. It's already connected to that upper triangle, ready for her whenever she's ready to install it. Like, uh, looks like you're doing a great job on the MLI. I think uh, they're happy with that config, and you can pass the triangle up to Kate when you're ready. Okay, you're attaching to the right. All right. And also, I'll hand you that side first. Okay. And the red on it is locked out. Okay, copy. You see it? and I have my rep on the right. Okay, let me know when you're ready to take control. I am ready to take control. Hey, okay, you've got it. I've got control. All right, Glover just handed off the upper triangle to Kate Rubens. Okay, and Ike, on uh, Kate's go, you can release the bag rep. And I have control. I have it ready to go. Uh, the bag rest, you want the rest to go back to the bag or to the mounting bracket? Yeah, we want the rat back in the bag. Sorry, I, you'll have to release it from the mounting bracket. That's okay. Either you can do it, Kate, or you can push it back this way and I'll get it. No, it'll stretch with me. Okay, I'm we'll sending it back towards you. I still have control. Again, Rubens has control of that uh, upper bracket. They're just making sure that the tether configuration is okay before she begins the work of installing it to the mast canister. Installing the center pad to the mast canister with the arrow pointing up. Arrow is up. And you'll engage the left side first, and then pivot the right side to engage the soft dock. All 
Pike, you'll be working on stowing your short PGT on handrail 5372. That's near the APFR width. And Frank, I've got it in the soft track. Copy, soft track. Thank you. Kate, on your long PGT, your settings will be alpha 2, clockwise 2. Great views from the high definition camera view of uh, Kate Rubin's helmet camera. Alpha 2, clockwise 2. She's confirming the pistol grip settings uh, before she goes ahead and uh, starts driving some of the bolts that you see on the uh, center pad there that's currently soft docked to the mast canister. Uh, driving those bolts will secure it in place. Five through mic 8 to torque. We anticipate 11 and a half turns. Copy 11 next door. Wow. We adjust the distance that are ready to be here. What's going on? Hey, Kate, uh, from the HECA camera, it looks like that center pad is moving more than we expected. Do you mind rechecking the soft dock? Did it soft dock? Okay, copy. And did you say counterclockwise too, Chris? I'm sorry. Uh, clockwise too, correct? Yep, settings will be alpha 2, clockwise 2. Good. All right, Rubens has a good soft dock position on that center pad, driving that first bolt to secure it in place. And Ike, as you put that short PGT on handrail 5372, remember you'll have to reach it from the other side, so you might want to cheat it over to the far side. Say that again. You'll be storing that short PGT on handrail 5372. Uh, you'll need to reach that from the other side, so you might want to cheat it over as far as you can. Frank, okay. Frank I've got seven turns. I do have good torque, point eight, good green light. That's on M5. And Kate, what was the torque on that? That's three point eight actual. Copy 3.8. And I got uh, disregard last. I, I was one step ahead of you. You'll, you'll need to do, you need that on the uh, left side first. And I can get it from both sides, it's not that wide, it's in the middle. Okay, copy. If you're good, I'll drive on M8. You have a go for M8, okay. In work. Ruben's driving the second of four bolts to secure the center pad to the mast canister. In the meantime, Glover is already a couple steps ahead, getting ready for the next series of tasks that'll install the struts on the left side from this view of, of Kate Ruben's. It'll be on the left side. Copy 7, 3.6, green light on my gate. Okay, you have a go for the next bolt. Two good bolts out of four on the center pad. Ruben's working on that third bolt. Three point six torque, seven turns, good green light. Copy, Kate. And you have a go for the final bolt. Three good bolts out of four. Rubens securing the last bolt of the center pad. Three point 
Point seven torque, good green light, and turns on mic seven. Copy for mic seven, Kate, and we are checking. Um, let you know shortly. You doing, Ike? Not well. I'll just take a couple snaps of you. Hopefully, one of them came out. <laughs> And Kate, we're uh, still evaluating those torques. Uh, we'll have one for you shortly. Copy. The suit guy. Remote control is four. Okay, Rubens uh, successfully drove all four bolts on the center pad. Teams on the ground are evaluating, making sure everything is okay before she goes ahead and leaves her current position. The next set of series of tasks uh, require her to egress or get out of the portable foot restraint and reset it to get another angle uh, so they can start working on the left side of the mast canister. So they're just making sure everything is okay before we go on to the next series of steps. In the meantime, Glover, you see off to the left from this view, is already getting some of those struts ready for the next series of tasks. We could uh, give the center pad a good wiggle and just make sure that it's solidly. It sure is, and I don't want to put more than 40 pounds into the mass canister, but it is absolutely solid. Uh, we saw that, Kate. Good job, and uh, we're, we're checking. All right, Kate, uh, that is a good install on the center pad. So you can install your PGT and verify that the pit pins and MOI are in place. Okay. The MOI is in place. Both pit pins are in place. PGT, the log PGT is stood on the right hand rail. Okay, copy. And you can move uh, the EV1 ret from upper triangle to the PGT. Engineers on the ground are happy with the four bolts uh, driven to secure the center pad in place. She's going to wrap up her work site, Kate Rubens will, uh, on the upper uh, part of the mast canister installing that center pad. She'll have to egress or get out of the foot restraint and uh, reset it, get it in another configuration to start working on the left side of the mast canister. Uh, Astronaut Victor Glover already a couple steps ahead, uh, getting those struts ready uh, to hand off to Kate Rubens for the installation of the struts on the left side. I have the PGT. Okay, okay, and we see that the upper triangle is rotated down, and so you can retrieve the 716th uh, PGT and egress the APFR. You'll be transferring the PGT to Spike. I think I have it adjustable for me. Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah, actually, I don't know if you can change the settings. I can hands off to you. The ret. And I'm going to ret to it. Is there any can be more efficient? What is the PTC you're talking about? If you could change the APFR settings, I can hand you down the PTC. Okay. That's not a good plan. Let me know. Yeah, I'll uh, head over there in a the second. Hey, Kate, uh, because there are so many settings to change, the team thinks that it's best if you e egress and uh, change the settings after you egress. Happy. 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 And I, you'll receive that PGT, the long PGT, and still on your swing arm. And you can move the RET AET to the bag as desired. And I see you have eyes on the long PGT. Thank you. Do you have eyes on the long PGT? Uh, no. Ruben's handing off that pistol grip tool to uh, Victor Glover. He'll hold on to it and uh, get set up for the next series of tasks where it'll be used to install the struts on the left side of the mast canister. will come to one. So these settings will be six golf one. And can we start at the APFR? Uh, sure. Your APFR settings will be 12 Papa Papa Hotel 12. So the pitch goes to Papa Papa, the roll goes to hotel. Copy. And Ike, once you have that PGC secure, you can uh, start to retrieve the left mid strut. That'll be straps 12 and 13. Secure on my on my uh, swing arm, right? Uh, for the PGT affirmative. Okay. Uh, and you said you want the lower which which strut? Lower left. Uh, left mid strut. Left mid strut. Left mid. Okay. Happy. Left mid. Say again, please take. Is that golf on the APFR? Uh, yep, that should be hotel. Papa Papa Hotel. Hey, hotel.
Again, Ruben's configuring the uh, portable foot restraint that you're seeing from her high definition helmet camera view. She'll be working with uh, Victor Glover here shortly. They'll be trading roles in using a pistol grip tool uh, to secure the uh, left struts, the left side of the uh, modification kit. Yeah, we're seeing that, Kate. Uh, good job on working with it. And verify pitch knob is popped out. There'll be hotel on your roll. Yeah, we did that already. Going for one now, perfect. Okay, great. And so you'll receive the left mid strut and stow that on your BRT. She's still assisting the reflex. Oh, yep, sorry about that, Kate. I forgot that uh, we had uh, done the APF off first. So your WIFAC settings will be 6, Golf, 1. Extension goes to 1. And just a reminder that you'll have to hold out the knob so that it doesn't pop back in every time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, guys. Great teamwork. And that was, looks like uh, good settings on the WIFX and the APFR. Uh, so, Kate, before you ingress, you'll want to get the uh, left mid strut and put that on your BRT.
neck. I'm, I'm kind of stressed out if you can call me. Have it at my VRT rep. Okay, so you can hold it? Yep. Thank you, guys. Sorry. All right, back to the bag. Your hand? Yeah, if you want to hold it for a second. Okay, Frank, Mitch Brett is on my DRT. Okay, great, Kate. And now you can uh, ingress the APFR. Ike, you'll be retrieving the left lower strut, strap seven and eight. Left lower right, I show those on straps five and six. Uh, correct. I there should be left lower. We were showing straps seven and eight. Okay. Well, it's the left lower strip one. That's and it's in five and six. Okay, sounds great. Thank you, Mingra. Copy, Kate. Ruben's confirming. Ruben's confirming that she's in position, ready to receive that lower strut from her position. She'll be able to install it on the upper triangle. In the meantime, Glover will take the lead for using the pistol grip tool to secure it. Affirmative, Kate. Ruben's confirming her position uh, again. Glover will be the one to secure the uh, lower strut to the mast canister itself using the pistol grip tool. And Rubens will also use her pistol grip tool to secure it to the upper triangle. Keep coming towards me exactly as you are. Okay, I have control, but I'm not ready. Okay, you have control. And Kate, you'll want to run to the nearest handrail stanchion on the left lower strut. The left lower strut. And by nearest, you mean the nearest the M22 bolt? Uh, affirmative. Okay, I am ready. I have control. I can release your it or send it to me and I can release it. Uh, it's right here. I can okay. release it. Sending it towards you. Okay, it's off. Bag. You got it. I got control. Got control. All right, guys, nice job on that. So Ike, you'll be translating to the Saab launch bracket at the base of the mass canister, left side. On the way. And Frank, I'll be uh, inserting your L5 here and driving M22, correct? That's affirmative, Kate, uh, although we will have Ike install his side first. first. Ike. Yeah. Yep. Copy. And guys, you're doing great. Just want to let you know, about two hours in, our limiting consumable is battery for both, approximately eight hours, and we're about 15 minutes ahead on the timeline.
great news. Both uh, Rubens and Glove are making their way through the timeline even faster than expected. And the limiting consumable being battery, they got plenty of margin at the end of their uh, spacewalk to get uh, uh, at least this uh, modification kit fully installed and begin the work on the next modification kit, the brackets being installed on the other side of the P6 truss. Glover getting into position to uh, install the lower strut to the mast canister. He'll have to install his side first before Rubens begins work on her side, uh, holding on to the uh, upper triangle. Okay, I think I'm in a good position. So give me a second to get my... No problem. I'm keeping a straight away from you. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. And Kate, also, can you verify that the L5 grounding pit pin is released from the start, start location? Oh, sorry, it is. Yep, so you can uh, pull, pull, that pull that pit pin out. When you're ready, I'm ready for the bottom. Okay, coming towards you. Thanks, slow down. Keep going a little bit. I've got it. Okay. Got control. I have it readied. Um, can you keep control, please? I'm just okay. going to guide this. So, can you pitch it towards the mass canister? Yep. Oh, perfect. Hold that. The helmet camera view from Victor Glover installing that lower strut onto the mast canister. Okay, Frank, get hand started with two turns. Okay, great job. So you'll be using your short PGT. Settings will be alpha one, clockwise one. Glover has uh, two turns on the lower strut. He's going to bolt it a little bit more into place, giving it about four more turns with the pistol grip tool, the space drill, uh, before Kate Rubens maneuvers her end uh, to secure it to the upper triangle. Uh, she'll be able to uh, use her pistol grip tool, secure hers in place, and then uh, both of them will uh, take turns uh, securing the, that strut into place. Okay, Frank, what were those settings? Alpha 1, clockwise 1. And you'll be driving Mike 21, four turns only. Uh, we have a handover in about one minute. And Ike, that's a total of four turns, so if you already had two turns, it's two additional turns. Alpha 1. Likewise 1. Good words. Turns. Good words. Additional turns. Okay, and again, we have a hand over here in about 20 seconds. Kate, you can install the left lower strut to the mounting bracket, L5. Your settings will be Bravo 1, Clockwise 2. Okay, Ike, if you can maintain control, we need to get my PGT. Okay, just or is it? 
Now entering into a short handover period, losing audio and video very temporarily from the International Space Station. This again is a view of the International Space Station flight control room. The teams here in Orbit 2 are walking through uh, Kate Rubens and Victor Glover, walking them through their steps to install a modification kit, uh, struts and brackets on a uh, mast canister on the Port 6 Trust uh, that originally deployed the uh, solar arrays out there. This modification kit will allow a future set of solar arrays uh, to be installed on each of these man mast canisters. There will be one solar array installed on the mast canister that they're currently working on. Back with you. How do you hear? I've got you loud and clear, and uh, this will be Bravo 1, clockwise 2 to torque 15 turns. That's good words, Kate. Rubens uh, confirming her pistol grip tool settings before she drives the bolts necessary to connect the lower strut uh, to the mounting bracket, uh, part of that upper triangle that she installed very recently, to the upper portion of the mast canister. This should be the last maneuver she needs to perform uh, with the pistol grip tool to secure it uh, to that upper portion of the bracket. Now, uh, Victor Glover only has four turns on his side, so he'll complete the turns on the uh, lower side of the mast canister to uh, affix that portion of this modification kit. Copy, Kate. Can I hand start this? Uh, yes, Kate, you can do that. This is Mission Control Houston. We're in one of the longer uh, handover periods scheduled for our coverage of today's spacewalk. Again, the teams here uh, walking through the procedures, following along with Kate Rubens and Victor Glover, who are on the outside of the International Space Station on the far Port 6 truss. Kate Rubens is working to secure the lower strut to the mounting bracket using a pistol grip tool, a space drill. And let me just confirm, Bravo 1, clockwise 2, 15 turns. Good settings and affirmative 15 turns total. And Ike, as uh, Kate is working on that, we will take a glove, hat, and gauntlet check. Tapage dry, gauntlet are in place. I've got 11 decimal 8 for 5th green light, 6 turns on the PPT plus 5 handset, 4 5. We copy Kate and we're checking. Okay, and Kate, Mike 22 is a good bolt. And so, Ike, uh, Next, you'll be finishing uh, driving. Just a uh, warning that this is now a pinch point, so keep fingers clear of lower strut pad to BGA interface when driving the bolt. And Ike, uh, your settings here will be Bravo 7, clockwise 2. This is going to be a running torque, so you'll do turn, 10 turns only, 
and we'll get a running torque. Uh, important not to let go of the trigger during those 10 turns. Bravo 7, clockwise 2. Ten turns, I'll let go of the trigger. Good words. Ten total turns, correct? Uh, initially, correct. Uh, we'll get a running torque and give you the settings after that. I'm just talking about right now. I'm doing ten turns right now, correct? Affirmative. Ten turns only. Two hours, six minutes into today's spacewalk, Rubens and Glover have successfully installed the upper triangle uh, portion of the modification kit to the mast canister. Okay, Rubens has successfully installed her end of the lower left strut to the upper portion uh, where the mounting bracket is. And Victor Glover is finalizing his steps with the final few turns of the pistol grip tool to secure the lower strut to the base of the mast canister. Okay, we copy Ike. It looks like we torqued out, so we are checking. I'll have words for you shortly. Copy, Kate. Thank you. So, Ike, if, uh, if you could, uh, hit it again at 25.5. Thank you. And, Ike, we're just looking to see if you can get additional turns. should be regaining views from the International Space Station here momentarily. When we come back, we should see a, uh, a good left strut, perhaps Victor Glover finalizing those, uh, those turns. Guys, we're going to have you hold here while we check, and we'll have a handover here in five seconds. I'll be back with you shortly. Glover uh, completed the uh, turns necessary using the pistol grip tool. Engineers on the ground will just verify that that's a good torque and just make sure everything is secure before they move on to the next steps. In the meantime, it sounds like they're going to take a glove and hap check. We'll hear this periodically throughout today's spacewalk, making sure there are no scrapes or cuts on the gloves and making sure the helmet absorption pad that they're currently wearing on their heads is nice and dry. And Kate and I, back with you guys. Uh, we're still checking. Uh, Kate, I'll go ahead and take a glove, hap, and gauntlet check, and Ike will finish your glove check, please. Okay, good work. Work. Gloves are pristine, no damage. I have gauntlets in place. Copy, Kate. 
And EP2, no change for the globe. No change for the globe. So I have ground in place. Copy it. Coming back with some video from the International Space Station and entering into an orbital nighttime. International Space Station is 269 statute miles, uh, just south of the coast of Australia, heading northeastern into an orbital nighttime. Hi, can you uh, let us know the status of the black line? Is it flush yet or not? Negative. It's about a, about a quarter of an inch. Uh, from being flush. Copy, quarter of an inch. This is a helmet camera view from Victor Glover, who's at the base of the mast canister. You see off to the right there, that's the lower strut that he installed, completing his turns necessary using the pistol grip tool. We're just waiting word from the engineers here on the ground that the torque uh, and the position of the bolt is, is all good before we go ahead and move on to the next few steps. We completed the installation of the uh, mounting bracket and the upper triangle. Uh, this is the next step, the lower strut. Uh, Rubens and Glover will work together on the next series of steps to install a middle strut on the left side. That'll complete the left side before they move on to the right. Uh, it'll be a mirror image of what we're working on now, a lower strut as well as a mid strut. Bravo 7 was in the uh, 30s. I thought it was Hi right, guys, apologies for the delay here, uh, but what we're going to do is um, remove Ike's bolt and try again. So, okay, we're going to leave your bolt in place. 
Ike, your PGT settings will be Bravo 7, counterclockwise 2. So Glover, uh, this is the helmet camera view from Victor Glover. They're going to give this uh, bolt another shot, uh, completely unbolting it first uh, before uh, redoing the series of steps to bolt the lower strut at the base of the mast canister. Copy, Ike. Uh, if you can inspect the bolt and the interface uh, for any damage or fog. I can help maintain control that. Okay, Frank. Interface looks good. Can you bring back towards me, Okay. Pushing the bolt out. There's a little bit of orange residue on the thread. You can see that in my WVS. Like we uh, copy and understand, unfortunately, not able to see it on the WVS just because of lighting. Uh, but you have a good view there, just we can't make it out. Okay. It appears in a couple spots that the threads have been worn down. Okay, we got the egg. Just a little as if there was metal on metal. Most of the threads are the same dark gray color. And that orange stuff appears to be some kind of gunk that's uh, not filling the spaces between the bolts, but there's definitely something on the bolt that's orange. Okay, we copy, Ike. Thank you. And uh, we're checking. This is Mission Control Houston. Again, you're looking at a helmet camera view from Victor Glover's spacesuit. That's camera number 20 at the bottom right corner. Glover has unbolted the lower strut. Right, we'll have words for you shortly. Engineering teams here on the ground are analyzing the next steps before uh, attempting to rebolt that lower strut to the base of the mast canister.
Okay, so Ike, uh, we think that orange residue is part of the locking feature. Uh, so at this point, we're going to try again, and we'll just start in the install. So uh, verify spherical bearing alignment, and then you can hand start the bolt. And I can help control from this side, just by me as needed. Thank you. Bringing it a little bit closer to you. You can pour me down. Okay. Okay, perfect. So, Frank, this spherical bearing, it seems like it's supposed to uh, rotate a little bit. It to be locked in one position. Just about flush with the interface on the uh, thread. It does seem like it could pitch. A little more station meter, and it might be perfectly flush. I'm not able to rotate it. Okay, we're uh, we copy Ike, and we're checking. And so, like, if you need to, you can either use your hand or a uh, ret to maybe re try to realign that spherical bearing prior to hand starting. Hey, Frank, I'm, uh, I don't think a ret is going to do much. Um, Maybe this thing moved at one time. I don't. I don't think it's. It's. Uh, there's a lot of friction in there. Okay. Copy. Ike. And it's like degrees from from perfectly flush. It's not. Can't do a whole lot. And the bracket moves, so it'll it will move to be flush. The spherical bearing. As I start to install the bolt, doesn't start off that way. Okay, copy. Um, do you think that's causing a misthread as because of the angle misalignment? I don't think so. I think it it lines the bolt up as we're driving. I'm not sure what the the bolt if the strut and kind of pitches and has a, an orientation it wants to be in. Seems like the spherical bearing makes the pad on the lower strut uh, line up, and then it, sh it seems like it will drive straight once it's engaged. But it's not because the spherical bearing is moving, it's because the uh, it has a little bit of play. Okay, uh, we're checking. I have words for you shortly. You know, if I can help, I don't want to put too much load into the system, but I can help stabilize it from this end. Okay, yeah, that's what you're doing now is perfect. Okay.
Okay, Ike, so uh, we're gonna, what we're going to have you do is just try to hand start it and just uh, maybe give us some feedback on how you think that's going, if that's causing a misthread or extra uh, friction as you're hand starting it. Okay, the answer very nice. I've got a few turns on it now. Okay, Kate, are you putting any uh, load into it or? Thank you, I'm just very okay. highly stabilizing. Yeah, and it seems like there's still place. The brackets are sobbing in your face, so. Current, when you would load, I can see the play up here. After it's I got like the third turn pretty easily, and now on the fourth turn, there's a lot of uh, running torque. Talk up. Okay, uh, so like with those words, and we're we're just going to go ahead and try driving it again. So your settings will be Bravo Seven Clockwise Two. This is Mission Control Houston. Uh, you are getting a live view from the helmet camera of uh, Victor Glover. Engineers on the ground are happy with the current configuration, so they're uh, giving Glover the go ahead to proceed and drive the bolt. I got ten more turns. Green light twenty five point three on the torque. Now the black line is about an eighth of an inch. Maybe just quite less than an eighth of an inch, two millimeters from being flush. Okay, Ike, we copy ten additional turns for a total of thirteen, twenty five point three in green light. Good copy. See that left to right. Yeah. And I, we're uh, checking those numbers. We'll have words for you shortly. Uh, Kate, we we're just wondering, did you make any TCV changes? We saw a change in your battery. Um, so when it became night, I just went down to like zero. Okay, we copy. Thanks, Kate. I turn my glove users on also. Okay, copy. All right, so Ike, based on uh, those numbers, we're going to go ahead and go to manual ratchet. Your settings will be ratchet clockwise, 30 decimal 5. Copy. And Ike, we're anticipating uh, approximately half, half a turn additional, and you're looking for two good pops. Good and square from up here. Got a quarter of a turn. Quarter of a turn. 
Can you verify or let us know where the black line is? Uh, we're checking. All right, whoever drew around M22 did a lovely job. <laughs> Very nice, Sharpie. Okay, guys, uh, so at this point, we're going to go ahead and move on. We may end up having to come back to this bolt uh, either at the end of the CVA or next CVA. Uh, but, Ike, for now, you can put your PGT back into motor. And then, Ike, you will leave the PGT on handrail 5372, bias it towards the right side. And Ike, as you're working with that PGT, could you please do a wiggle test on that lower strut and slob interface? Wow, that's 
interesting because a couple turns ago it had some wiggle, but it is solid now. Okay. Yeah, we see that. Thanks, Rick. Uh, so, again, you'll put that PGT on handrail 5372. And I see you have a visual on the BRT in the mid stretch. Say again. I'm looking for a visual on the BRT in the mid stretch. Pull that around. I don't know if you can see that. On the left side. Not worry. Uh, it's kind of going up towards your underarm pit. Yeah, it's just don't keep tightening the brake a little bit. It's going aft and then up to your underarm pit. If you can push that down, it'll help get you started. Push that down. This is Mission Control Houston. You're looking at the helmet camera uh, from the view of uh, Victor Glover aboard the International Space Station. Uh, nope, I was just going to say that, uh, Kate. So, Ike, after you uh, leave your PGT on the handrail, you'll verify that the MLI is covering the uh, lower strut pad. And then next, we're going to work on installing the left mid strut. Copy. And so, Ike, you'll translate to the mass canister left pad install location. And Kate, you'll be retrieving the left mid strut and releasing the pit pin from the locked position if that wasn't previously done. Yeah, I think it's okay to keep it in the locked position because that way it doesn't extend out when it's on my BRT. Yeah. And guys, I'm going to hand you over to Christina for a couple minutes while Ike's translating. This is a high-definition view from the helmet camera of uh, Kate Rubens. They just completed the, the, the uh, duo outside now. Kate Rubens and uh, Victor Glover completed the installation of the lower strut. They may come back to it to give it a couple of extra turns, uh, but right now they're gearing up to install the middle strut, and that will complete, complete the installation on the left side of this mast canister. You can see from the helmet camera of Kate Rubens, Victor Glover uh, crawling up the side of the mass canister, getting into place to secure that middle strut, and you're gonna have the side pass. which is currently in the hands of Kate Rubens. The voice you're hearing from Mission Control Houston is Capcom Christina Cook taking over temporarily from Ground IV uh, Frank Rubio. Okay, I see that it looks like Ike has the side pad, and that means, Ike, you're a go to install the left side pad to the mass canister. Just make sure that arrow is pointing up. You're going to engage the right side and then pivot to the left to get the soft up. I guess they'll have control so that you can bring it loosely, but I've got control. Back at the helmet camera view of uh, Victor Glover, 
It's a similar procedure to installing that lower strut. Um, both of the astronauts will be using pistol grip tools. Victor Glover will first secure the mid strut to the mass canister with his pistol grip tool uh, before handing it back over to Kate for her to install it. Each of them has a pistol grip tool in hand. Trying to get the the right side to pivot. You know what I mean, I'm trying to get this base plate to pivot, like locked right there. Nana, you got any words on how to make this pivot a little bit more? We are talking about it, and it looks like you're doing everything we would recommend pivoting, like like what you're doing right now. Are you able to do that enough to get that right side under the lip? And Kate, Kate, if you have any more play to move it out to your left side, that could help him as okay. well. It's engaged. Okay. It's engaged. I'm still holding on control. Nice job, guys. It's a good soft talk, and it was also the MLR. The MLR is kind of pushing go. And I see soft talks, like, they're reasonable, but they're pretty heavy pieces to the center pad overcame it, I'm just holding it very still in position. It's easy to come back out again. Okay, Nano. Got in. One, two, three, and four, my thing. Ike, say again. Thanks. Okay, we are ready, um, if you are, for your PGT work here, and I can give you settings. Alpha 2, clockwise 2. Alpha 2, clockwise 2 is set. And you are going to be doing bolts 1 through 4 to torque. It'll be about 11 and a half turns, we think. That'll be torque. This FYI, mine are 7. Okay, 3.6 on the torque, seven turns on M1. Copy, 3.6 on the torque, seven turns, and did we get a green light? Green light. Okay, you can move on to the next bolt, and I'll hand you back over to Frank. Thank you. Nice job, Nana. All right, guys, okay. back with you here. So now that Ike has put in one... Glover working on installing that mid strut. There are four bolts needed to secure the middle strut to the mast canister. First one is down. Three to go. Man, I'm going to wait till we get to the second bolt. Please, okay. Yeah, wait. Just tell us what's next. Copy, Kate. Am I installing all four or is she going next? Yep, uh, you actually can work concurrently after the first one, and so, uh, but that's fine to wait till the second one, Kate. Um, so yeah, Ike will just continue to work through all four bolts. Okay, I can go while she's working. No, I'm not, let's just get this side pad on. My experience with the uh, upper triangle, we want to get this fully bolted before I start putting those on this side. Okay, we copy, and that's, uh, we're, we concur with that plan. Got two on the opposite side, Kate. You can get started if you want. Two point seven three light, and that one was eleven turns. So it's not even moving. My side is nice and steady. Okay, gotcha. We copied. Was that three point seven or two point seven? Three point seven. Copy. Three point seven. Eleven turns. Green light. And Kate, for you, your settings will be Bravo 1, clockwise 2. Okay. 
that last one I gave you, uh, Frank was M4 on M3. I had nine turns, green light 3.6 on the torch. Copy, nine turns, 3.6, green light on M3. Glover currently working to install that middle strut. Four bolts needed, three are down, one to go. Must have been slipping on that one, Frank. I guess must not have been engaged. I counted 17 turns. It's flush like the other bolts. Got a good green light, 3.7 on the torque. Uh, we copy all like uh, part 17 turns, 3.7 green light. We'll check uh, and agree that you probably were slipping on that. Uh, could you please go back to M1 on the same settings and see if you can get any more turns? See if you can get any more turns. Copy. Glover com completed driving all four bolts going back to one just to make sure it's nice and snug. That'll complete uh, his installation after that. He doesn't have any more tasks to drive this middle strut. And then we'll leave it to Kate Rubens to affix the middle strut to the mounting bracket on her side with her pistol grip tool. Copy. No additional turns on M1. Okay, Ike, uh, that is a good install on the side pad. You can store your PGT, and then Kate, your settings on your short PGT will be Bravo 1, clockwise 2. Okay, I've got Bravo 1, clockwise 2. And as a reminder, you may need to egress the APFR, and you can use the mod kit for body positioning only uh, for this install. Okay. Okay, you'll be driving Mike 28 to Torque. We anticipate approximately 15 turns. And guys, we have a handover here in about 10 seconds, so I'll be with you shortly on the other side. Entering into another uh, brief handover period. We're losing video from the International Space Station temporarily. You're getting a view at the International Space Station Flight Control Room. These are the teams supporting today's spacewalk, led by Flight Director Marcos Flores. Next to him, uh, Frank Rubio is the voice you're hearing here from Mission Control, the ground IV, walking our two astronauts through the intricate procedures. To his right is uh, NASA astronaut Christine Cook taking on the Capcom role. You'll hear her voice as well occasionally. And Art Thomason taking on the spacewalk officer role. He knows the procedures backwards and forwards with the support of his team in some of the back rooms, relaying those procedures and checking and verifying all of the steps, making sure the bolts are tight, the torque is good, all along the way, uh, and relaying that to the flight control teams. Again, we have a good uh, middle strut on uh, Victor Glover's end, just waiting to install it on uh, Kate Rubin's side.
she has to use her pistol grip tool to affix it to the mounting bracket on the forward end. She's on the uh, tip of a portable foot restraint to get her a good angle on, uh, on that mounting bracket, having her install that. After she's complete and uh, the engineers say everything looks good on their end, uh, we'll switch over to the right side and install the lower and mid struts on the right side. Copy. 10.5 turns, 11.9 green light. We're checking. And is the black line flush key? Confirmed. Copy. Thank you. All right, guys, that is a good bolt on Mike 28 and a good install for the left mid strut. So, Kate, you can stow your PGT and install the grounding pit pin to the grounding block. And Ike, as Kate is installing the grounding pit pin, you can release uh, her rat from the left mid strut. With that, the left side of the modification kit, the brackets are installed. You have a middle strut there, and uh, just below this view from uh, Victor Glover's helmet camera, we do have a lower strut on the left side, as well as the upper triangle that, uh, containing the mounting bracket that will eventually house uh, the future iRosa solar array upgrade. With that complete, uh, the two astronauts will move on to the next side. There's, again, a, a mirror image of what we've just worked on on the left side. you got a lower strut as well as a middle strut. They will work on the lower strut first. Coming up on three hours into today's spacewalk. Frank, I've got my BRT rep back on my BRT. Pit pin is installed to the grounding box with a good pull cut. Copy, Kate. Thank you. And Kate, you can egress the APFR, and we'll be rolling into a new setting. Route this pit pin so it doesn't interfere with future M16 and 15. Copy. Good plan. For when you get up here, my friend. Regaining views from the helmet camera of astronaut Kate Rubens, who's currently at the end of a portable foot restraint. She's been in this position to install the lower and middle struts. You can get a good view from her angle of that configuration. She'll move over and reconfigure the uh, portable foot restraint. You see is leaning slightly to the left from this position to get a good angle on those left struts. She'll do the same thing on the other side, just maneuver the uh, portable foot restraint over, leaning slightly to the right, and get a good angle to install the lower and middle struts on the right side. Okay, Frank, I've egressed the HFR. 
Copy, Kate. And you'll be changing the role on the APFR to Charlie. So your new settings will be 12, Papa, Papa, Charlie, 12. Over the Atlantic Ocean. And Ike, you're going to be retrieving the right mid strut. That should be straps 9 and 10. Charlie in hand. Ike rolls in Charlie. Three in gusting. Okay, I might be giving you this first. Oh. You want to the mid right first and then the lower right, like we did last time? Affirmative. Kate, as you receive the right mid strut and do a ret swap, you'll want to ret to the stanchion closest to the side pad. I'll be closest to the side pad. Then as far as you know, I can try to reorient. Okay. I've got it. All right, I've got control and ready. Bag red is off. Got it? Yep. The mid right set is ready to my BRT. Closest to the side Copy, Kate. And now you can ingress the APFR. Mike, you'll be retrieving the right lower strut that straps five and six. Blue one's left, got it in hand. And you'll be transferring that with the clevis bolt towards Kate. Kate Rubin's easing her way into the portable foot restraint. This will be the last angle she needs to install the right two struts uh, from her position at the top of that foot restraint. Uh, attached to her by way of body restraint tether is the middle strut. She'll have that ready to go whenever uh, they're ready to move on to that task. In the meantime, you can see from the helmet camera view of Kate Rubin's Victor Glover off uh, at the strut bag, getting that lower strut uh, out of the bag. Uh, that'll be the first task for them uh, on the right side is installing the lower strut. The tasks will mirror what we just saw on the uh, left side. They'll position the lower strut at the base of the uh, mast canister. Victor Glover will uh, secure uh, the base of the lower strut uh, in place first with a few turns before allowing Kate uh, Rubens to drive uh, the pistol grip tool on her end, securing it to the uh, mounting bracket and Glover will finish off the job with his uh, pistol grip tool you, uh, right to the lower strut you'll want to right to the handrail stanchion that's nearest to you that's nearest to you Copy. Three hours into today's spacewalk, the two spacewalkers are more than halfway done with the first modification kit on the 2B power channel. Okay, I have control. Control and that is I'm just going to hold this here while you translate. Let me know if I need to move it. Uh, let's see. I can move it. Or neuter. I'm just, I need to get that right off. Oh, okay. So can you push it back toward me? Yep. Yeah. Hold on. 
me and my wife. Kate Rubens now has control of that lower strut. She's just going to hang on to it while she's in position on top of the portable foot restraint, allowing uh, Victor Glover to make his way over to the work site on the base on the right side of the mass canister. That'll be the position he needs to be in in order to drive the bolts of that lower strut. And I shall be translating to the mass canister right side, FOB launch bracket. Okay, you can release the L6 grounding pit pin from the strut stall location. Like in the heck of you. Yeah, it's a pretty outstanding view. It's like nonstop. Great pictures. Okay. Right. Mike, I didn't wear a camera on me. We've got an H D video for you. Holy VA. Yep, and uh, also of note, it's actually significantly better than the WVS view, which is coming in very broken. Okay, and that's the, uh, that's the letter issue, Chris. And I, that may be a tight fit for you there. Uh, you may want to go around the canister. There should be a pretty good translation path around the bottom side of the canister. From this view, you can clearly see the mast canister. It is the uh, soda can looking structure at the center of your screen. Uh, the astronaut with the red stripes is astronaut Kate Rubens. She's at the top of a portable foot restraint at the perfect angle to install the final two struts on the right side. Astronaut uh, Victor Glover is making his way over to his work site at the bottom of the mast canister. His next task is to install the lower strut on the right side, getting a good angle. He'll need to use a pistol grip tool, the space drill, to secure uh, that strut into place. That strut currently in tow by uh, astronaut Kate Rubens. She'll hand it off once uh, Victor Glover is in position. I feel like this setting is one more click of roll, and I like it. Uh, Kate, I understand you would want one more click of roll? Uh, negative. I feel like it is one more click of roll or something different than the other side, and I, I'm liking it very much. Copy. Thank you. Your future, future IROSA. Okay, coming towards you slowly. And Ike, uh, you'll want to verify the spherical bearing alignment. Yeah, 
And then Kate also reminded to avoid imparting loads uh, during the lower strut bolt install. Copy, and same thing, I still just hold it. I've got control, but central. Last time, the sun was right in front of me doing this, and same thing is happening now. <laughs> awesome. On this side, I'm not really able to influence the orientation of the spherical bearing. Just about parallel to the front of the uh, strut. Thank you. Copy. Okay, and started two turns. Copy, Ike. And your PGT settings will be Alpha 1, Clockwise 1. Glover has the uh, lower strut hand started, just a couple turns with his hand. He'll now move over and use the pistol grip tool you can see just out of his reach. Give it a few more turns with the space drill uh, before he hands it over to Kate Rubens, who has her own PGT pistol grip tool, and she'll uh, secure the lower strut on her end to the mounting bracket. All right. And like again, you're looking for Alpha One clockwise one, and you'll be driving four turns total, so it should be two additional turns. Alpha one clockwise one six for two additional turns. Two additional turns. Copy. Okay, you can install the right lower strut L6 to the mounting bracket L6. Okay, I see L6. That's the M20 bolt, correct? Okay, that, that is affirmative. That is the Mike 20 bolt. And I'm assuming you'll see the hand start. Affirmative. All right, Glover has uh, the lower strut. Uh, secured on his end temporarily. Now Kate Rubin's just hand tightening the lower strut on her end to the mounting bracket. She'll then use the pistol grip tool to secure it in place. Okay, will be Bravo 1, clockwise 2. Be Bravo 1, clockwise 2. And you'll be driving Mike 20 to torque, approximately 15 turns total.
Alright, I've got a slow torque 10.4. Go ahead and uh, uh, 10 turns. And I just don't mind the... Okay, to understand. 10.4 on the left, torque, 10 turns. Left shoulder. If you move your left shoulder away from it, that might have been a bit. I drove it again about a quarter turn, 11 decimal 8, big green light, perked up. Okay, understand green light, 11 decimal 8, about a quarter additional turn. Can you confirm the black line is flush? Confirm that the black line is flush. Copy, thank you, Kate. We're uh, checking those numbers. Kate, that's a good install for Mike 20. You can store your PGT. Ike, your settings will now be Bravo 7, clockwise 2. And with that, we have a good install on the mounting bracket. Uh, Kate Rubin successfully installed that lower strut to the top portion where she is working, her current work site. Uh, now going back to Victor Glover, he only has a couple turns on the lower end of that strut. Uh, he's going to go ahead and finish it off with his uh, pistol grip tool, making sure it's secure to the base of the mass canister. Good settings. EMU, ECDs at one and a half left heaters off for the day pass. Copy, Kate. Got a six turns, green light 25.4. Can you say again on the turn count, please, Ike? Six. Six turns. Okay, understand. Six turns and 25 decimal four on the running torque. Any torque now, there's green light, yes. All right, Ike, could you please hit it again at the same torque or same setting cor correction and uh, before we move on to manual ratchet? Light 25.4 in uh, an eighth of a turn. Copy, I, and we're checking.
Okay, uh, Ike, based on what we saw on the other side, we're going to back this out six turns only. So your settings will be Bravo 7, counterclockwise 2, and you'll back it out six turns only. Ike, as you're backing it out, I've got a hold up here. Okay. Hey, Bravo 7, counterclockwise 2, six turns only. Good words. So Glover is uh, undoing the bolt just a couple of turns, about halfway, and then going to reattempt to uh, give it a few more turns. Okay, back up. Six turns. Copy. Six turns. Right. Okay, uh, you go back to your original settings. Bravo seven, clockwise two. Okay, and you'll drive to torque. Body of turns. 25.4 on the torque between light. Hi, could you please say again those numbers? Five and a half turns. 25.4 on the torque between light. We copy Ike. Okay, Ike, so we're going to try manual ratchet. So your settings will be ratchet clockwise 30 decimal 5. And you'll drive to torque again, and you're looking for two good pops. So again, using that pistol grip tool as a ratchet, giving it a few extra turns, uh, making sure it is nice and snug at the base of the mass canister. All right, two good pops. It was one and a quarter turns, and we are two millimeters from having the black line flush. Copy, two good pops, uh, one millimeter, and uh, understand, one millimeter from the uh, black line flush, Mike? Two millimeters. Understand, two millimeters. Okay, Ike, if you could uh, drive it one more time on manual ratchet for two more good pumps. I've got the tip pin in the grounding block. We'll test thermalizing, please. 
Copy, Kate, thank you. And next you'll release uh, the RET. Okay, we copy Ike. Two more good pops and a fraction of a turn. Uh, you can leave the PGT on handrail 5372, and if you can also do a quick uh, wiggle test on the lower strut. This one still has some play in it. But I also noticed something just now while I was ratcheting it, I was able to adjust the uh, angle of the spherical bearing. When I pulled, I pulled, when I pulled to ratchet, it uh, pulled the spherical bearing in the bolts of my direction. It now lines back up here straight now, but they were it, it moves like this. Okay, we copy, Ike. Uh, good observation. So if you um, if you think you can get more turns, then we'll take those. Huh? Okay, let me just, uh, I think it's straight. We're still getting some play in the end. It is, so have some uh, wiggle to it. And I've got it, well, it looks straight to me, and I'll try to turn it again. Okay, it's still poking out. Pops. Okay, we copy. Thanks, Ike. No okay, Ike, uh, we're going to go ahead and move on. We may end up having to come back here with the uh, torque wrench again. So you'll leave the PGT on handrail 5372 and then verify that the lower strut MLI covering is covering the lower strut pad. I'll take my next, I've got the mid right handrail. Copy, Kate. Um, you do have, I understand you have the right med strut in hand? Okay, you can work on releasing the pit pin from the lock position. Should be opposite the hand room. With that, uh, the two astronauts will move on to the middle strut. The lower stu strut is installed. Might need a few more turns later with another tool, likely a torque wrench. Uh, it's the same on the other side as well. Give it a couple extra turns. Make sure it's snug. In the meantime, the teams here on the ground are ready to move on to the next task, which is installing that middle strut on the right side. I extended when it was right in front of me versus waiting till I did the handoff and pushing away. Uh, definitely recommend this the second way I did this mid strut versus the first. We copy, Kate. Appreciate the words.
All right, Ike, we see uh, you have the side pad with the arrow pointing up. And uh, for the soft dock, you'll engage the left side. It's it up. Okay, we see that. Great job. Okay, you can work on installing the middle grounding pit pin into the final position on the mid strut. Ike, you'll be using the long PGT. Hey, great. Great. I'm going to hold this here. All right, we'll just get his stuff. Okay, copy. Okay. Ike, you'll be using uh, the long PGT, Alpha 7, clockwise 2. And clockwise two. Uh, alpha two, clockwise two. But it needs help. Yeah, I thought that was this is the last time. Alpha two, clockwise two. Alpha two, clockwise two. Those are good settings. Alpha two, clockwise two. And. Mike, you'll be driving Mike 9 through Mike 12. Order doesn't matter. You know, driving them to torque, we anticipate 11 and a half turns. Three point seven on the torque, seven and a half turns, green light on 13. Sorry, 11, Mike 11. Copy, Mike 11. Turns green light 3.7 on light 10. Okay, it's stable now. You can. Okay. And I, we copied a 3.7 green light. What was the turn count on light 10? Seven, seven turns on light 10. Copy, seven turns. I think I'm ready for PGT settings for mic 24. Okay, Kate, uh, your settings will be Bravo 1, clockwise 2. Okay, Bravo 1, clockwise 2. Ten and a half, 3.6, green light on light 12. Copy, ten and a half, 3.6, green light on M12. Okay, you'll be driving Mike 24 to torque. We anticipate 15 turns total. Okay, copy. And guys, we're going to have a handover here in about 30 seconds. And so, Ike, you can continue with uh, Mike 9, and Kay, you'll drive Mike 24. I'll see you guys on the other side. All right, see you on the other side. 7 turns, 3.6 on the torque green line. Mike 9. Understand, 7 turns, 3.6, green of light on Mike 9. Once again, entering into a short handover, losing video from the International Space Station. Glover and Rubens together flying through that uh, those procedures for the middle strut on the right side. Glover working his way around all four bolts to secure it to the mass canister. And Rubens confirming the uh, settings on the pistol grip tool for her task uh, to uh, drive one bolt on her end uh, to the mounting bracket. All right, guys, back with you. How do you read? Still working on 24. Copy, Kate. And Ike, that was a good install on the side pad. You too. Work, Ike. Approximately three turns in, so. 
We copy Kate, and that is a good install on Mike 24. I've got my rep back from the mid -strut. Okay, copy. And Kate, you can install the pit pin to the grounded block. Copy, Kate. And Ike, uh, next you're going to be driving the adjustment collar bolts, Mike 25 and 26. Uh, we're just checking real quick to see uh, the ability to translate because of the play still left on those lower struts. There's only play on the uh, right lower strut or left lower strut for solid, but yes, happy to go back. Okay, guys, uh, looks like we have a go to translate. We'll just have to be extra careful and ginger on the uh, while translating on the struts or the bracket. Uh, so, Gate. Kate, you will egress the APFR, and you're going to be working on closing the MLI on the struts on the right side. On the right side. Okay. Ike, you're going to be driving the adjustment collar bolts, Mike 25 and Mike 26. Need to drive the bolts before we do the MLI. Copy it. So with that, the engineers on the ground have given a go for both of the astronauts to go ahead and move along the uh, modification kit. 
They still need to make sure that that bottom lower strut is uh, secure, but they are confident enough that the astronauts themselves can translate and perform some of the next, te next, next tasks. Glover is uh, working to uh, secure bolts of the adjustable section of the middle strut. It was adjustable to allow it to uh, stretch out enough to be bolted to both the mounting bracket and the mass canister. Glover just securing that in place. Okay, uh, we see that, Ike. Uh, and yeah, we'll try just driving each one all the way then. Sounds good. Does order matter? Yep, you'll want to drive Mike 26 first and then verify that the tab is secure before driving Mike 25. Okay. Mike, you're driving this to torque. We anticipate uh, ten and a half turns. Here's the helmet cam review from uh, Victor Glover. You can see there's two bolts uh, on the adjustable section of that middle strut. He's just uh, closing those up and locking it in place. Okay, I've torqued out at three turns. At a green light 22 on torque. Okay, understand three turns and is the tab secure? It's still about a little more than a quarter of an inch. Okay. Okay, let's uh, try driving the other side. I can see if that helps. One went about a quarter of a turn and torqued out at 21.9 green light. Okay, I understand, Ike. Uh, we're checking.
And Ike, uh, we're still with you here. We're just discussing. Uh, we're going to have to back out these bolts, and we're just trying to come up with a plan for you. Victor Glover continuing to work on that, uh, the bolts near the adjustable part of that middle strut, just making sure they're secure in place. Engineers on the ground just evaluating those turns. In the meantime, the space station is in an orbital nighttime crossing into darkness, 270 statute miles over the South Indian Ocean. Bravo 5, counterclockwise 2. And you're, you're going to back out the tab side bolt. Good words. Back out the tab side bolt. Two turns only. We're going to try to even out the clamp and see if that helps. You say two turns? Is that two turns only? And I uh, confirm you got two turns on that. You backed it out two turns. Was asking you if that was two turns. I guess we had a handover or something. In work. Two turns on line 26. Copy. And so right now you will go to Bravo 5 clockwise 2, and we're going to try to drive the non-tab side. Bravo 5 clockwise 2, non-tab side. Good words. I got one turn on it. How, what am I driving it to? Okay, uh, we understand one turn, and now we'll go back to the tab side. I, did, I only got one turn, then I stop. Okay, understand. Okay, Frank. I got one turn, and then I stop. It didn't work out, I just stopped. Understand, I, uh, we're discussing. Uh, hold, and uh, I'll have words for you shortly. We're going to have a handover here in about 10 seconds. Once again, losing video from the International Space Station. Should be regaining it here shortly, just in a couple of seconds. In the meantime, Glover is continuing to work on that adjustable part of the mid strut on the right side. I come back with you. How do you read? Out of here. Okay, so what we uh, think is going to work best here, or we're going to attempt is to walk the clamp alternating sides. Uh, so complete one additional turn on that side for two turns total, and then you'll alternate sides two turns at a time. Copy.
on the mic, uh, yeah, mic 26 bad, I only got one turn, in 1.8 on the torque. Okay, uh, we copy, Mike, and uh, are you able to get any additional turns on the other side? Negative. Okay. Uh, we copy, Ike. Uh, we're discussing. I'll have words for you here shortly. How are you doing over there, Kate? I'm doing good. My head hurts too. How you doing? Good. Chill out. Right now, uh, Victor Glover and Kate Rubens both standing by. Glover has been working on that middle strut, the adjustable, uh, the bolts near the adjustable section of that middle strut on the right side to secure it in place. Engineers on the ground are currently evaluating some of the next steps, making sure it's good to go, or if there's any additional steps needed. Working on a plan. Unfortunately, uh, it involves uh, a little bit more than just uh, continuing to drive and. Uh, with these bolts, I'll have words for you here shortly. But Frank, we know that the smart folks are talking about this on the ground. We should have tested some of these bolts ID. We would have found this area. 
All right, guys. Uh, so two-step plan. Uh, first step, Kate, for you is we're going to have you go and get the torque wrench. Uh, we feel like we're going to need that for possibly this clamp and also for the lower struts. And so the torque wrench should be in the other bag. And Kate, correction, that's the ratchet wrench that we're looking for, ratchet wrench. And Kate, uh, yep, for that translation path, essentially you're going to go back to the trunnion, head zenith, and over to the bag. So Victor Lover is going to remain in his position on the right middle strut. In the meantime, uh, Kate Rubens is going to translate to the bag that's currently on the zenith side. Uh, at the beginning of the spacewalk, they both brought uh, strut bags out to the work site, one for each of the power channels. They're using the uh, ones on the 2B channel now. There's a ratchet wrench in the other bag. She's just going to go grab it uh, and uh, possibly use it for uh, securing the bolts on some of the lower struts and even possibly the middle strut. Uh, engineers on the ground will continue to evaluate that, but she'll get that and that'll help uh, secure some of these some of these remaining parts down and, uh, of the modification kit to the mast canister. And Kate, uh, you're going to be heading over to the 4 Bravo bag. Copy. I'm sorry, the, the rods are a couple of degrees from being like perfectly centered, but they are both uh, in between the space on the frame. Copy, I. Okay, I, uh, so based on that, we're going to go ahead and uh, release the bolts. So your settings will be Bravo 5, counterclockwise 2. Five, Those are uh, good words for the settings, Ike, and you'll just rotate the um, bolts back until they are free. Okay, 25 and 26, we'll release the original until it's free. Copy, Ike. You can um, stow your PGT and you're going to take the telescoping portion and rotate. Essentially there's a tooth mechanism and we want to make sure that the teeth aren't hitting each other. So you'll rotate both pieces uh, 
and then align the bars back up and try to get it as close to uh, perfectly aligned as possible. Frank, and I'm going to need more vectors on the translation path. See the bag. There's no handrail between bag and I. I'm at lift 18, T6. Copy, Kate. And uh, we're checking. I have words for you shortly. One side of this bracket moves, but the other side is pretty fixed in place. I'm not able to uh, move it at all. The, uh, the side with the bolt heads on it can get it to spring in and out, and uh, the other side goes stuck in place. Okay, copy, Ike. Um, I think rotating one side maybe uh, still have the same effect, and so if you can just align them back up, and then we'll try to reattempt the bolts. They would say rotate together, so if it's, um, because I'm not able to rotate. I'm talking about the bracket, the thing I'm trying to tighten. I cannot, uh, I cannot rotate it relative to the teeth. The, uh, the nut side is fixed. Uh, I'm not sure to what. When I try to grab the uh, which, uh, which, what's supposed to rotate relative to what? Because the telescoping portion, nothing's really rotating right now. Okay, I uh, understand, Ike. Okay, Ike, uh, in, in that case, uh, once you have them aligned as close to uh, perfectly as possible, we're going to attempt to re drive the uh, bolts with a higher torque setting. Affirmative. And uh, Kate, it looks like you figured it out. Uh, you continued heading inboard over to the turning stru structure, and then you'll head zenith. Well, we're still working on the middle section of that mid strut on the right side. Uh, going to redo some of those bolts at the adjustable section in the middle there, uh, at this time at a higher torque. In the meantime, uh, Kate Rubin's coming back with a ratchet wrench. It will be Bravo 6, clockwise 2. Good words. Which one would you like me to start with? Yeah, I think we're uh, going to start with the tab side again and uh, do the same walking me uh, method where you do two turns here and then alternate two turns on either side. Uh, 
Titanium at the Fort Bravo bag. Why is Titanium? I think the right Copy, Kate. And Kate, the ratchet wrench should be near the wire caddy. And Frank, both of them forked out um, on the second generation. Copy, Ike. And is the tab still moving? Uh, yes. There's still like a, it's about a third of an inch gap. Okay, understand. Uh, we're checking. There's also no longer any free play on the bulkhead side of the bracket. Okay, understand no more free play, Ike. Uh, does the clamp look symmetrically closed at this point? Like are both sides, do they, both sides have an equal gap? Hey, Carl. Copy. And Ike, uh, do you have any idea on the turn count for both sides? Yeah, so about five. Five. And uh, Ike, you came in broken, unreadable. Hold on. Sorry. Was so three, three total on each one. Okay, I understand. Three turns on each side. Turns on each one. Okay, that's the ratchet wrench. Ready to my mini workstation. I'm bringing the adjustable with me as well. Moving up the back here. Copy, Kate. Okay, I, I think we're uh, at a stopping point for now on this caller. Uh, so can you verify that the middle pit pin is in the final location? Uh, it, is, it is not.
And like as you uh, put that pipin in place, you can also put the MLI covering uh, in place. You, we may have to come back, but we uh, can't leave this uh, strut without MLI covering it. And I, the uh, pit pin should be coming out by the handrail, and then the final install location will be into the narrow telescoping part. Frank, I'm at my green house making a turn. Have that deep Copy, Kate. Thank you. Thank you, Frank. The is in the final location. Copy, Ike. Somebody goes under the MLI because I don't see a hole on the MLI for it to go through. That's an affirmative, Ike. The MLI goes on top of the pit pen. There is no hole for it. And, Kate, you are heading to the right lower uh, strut, radiator side, right lower strut, sob interface.
four hours, 12 minutes into today's spacewalk, Victor Glover. Uh, moving on to the next task of uh, covering some of the sections of the strut with uh, multi-layer insulation, that white fabric that you see, just making sure all those parts are covered and no metal is exposed. In the meantime, uh, Kate Rubens is coming back to the worksite with a ratchet wrench in tow. In tow. Uh, correct, Kate. So you're going to be essentially taking the same path that you took over to the WIF 38 area. Okay. 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 Oh, I'm just saying I'm back with you on P6 here. Thank you. And I, uh, while you're in that area, can you make sure that the right lower strut Zenith MLI is in place? Okay. Should be the silver. Thanks, Ike. Yep, that's what we were looking for. All right, guys, as uh, Kate, you're getting to your location, and Ike, you finish that up. Um, let me give you a big picture right now. So right now, the limiting consumable is EV2 battery at 754. We're about 45 minutes down on our timeline. Our goal right now is to finish the 2 Bravo config and get, it as, uh, get that right side lower strut as close in config as possible to the left side. And we're discussing plan forward right now. Uh, we don't think we can get to the minimum config for the full Bravo side, but we're hoping to possibly build the upper triangle and maybe tie it down before going in. Okay. And guys, right now we're looking at about four, four hours and 15 minutes PET. Great. Great big picture words by Frank Rubio. The ground IV for today. Essentially, Rubens and uh, Glover will uh, work with the uh, ratchet wrench to give the lower right strut just a little extra tug. Uh, to make it nice and snug on that uh, fixture at the base of the mass canister, making sure that it is stable uh, on the two Bravo side. They are a little bit behind on the timeline because of their efforts to tie down uh, some of these struts uh, with the proper amount of torque. So the plan, the going in plan now, is to just make sure that the bolts on this side, on the two Bravo side, uh, that's the earth-facing side are secure uh, before moving on to the four Bravo side on the other side. Uh, of course, they do have another spacewalk to go ahead and tackle the activities needed to install that modification kit, uh, but they're going to go ahead and uh, build the uh, upper triangle that's on the very top of the configuration of the modification kit.
and uh, move on to uh, go ahead and ingress or enter the uh, quest airlock and wrap up today's spacewalk. So uh, the plan right now is to continue to address the two Bravo side, making sure that that is uh, nice and snug uh, and fit and complete the uh, installation of that modification kit. And uh, Ike, next we're going to have you translate over to the left mid strut adjustment collar bolts and do those. But before uh, initiating your translation, I'll take a glove, hap, and gauntlet check. And copy gauntlets and gloves and uh, understand dry hap, Mike? That's correct. Hap is dry. Okay, we copy. And you'll be translating uh, down and around the canister to get over to the left side adjustment collar. And is this the same translation consideration on the uh, mounting hardware? Affirmative. Yep, we are still able to translate, but we have to be uh, extra careful with it. And uh, Kate, when you have a chance, I'll take a glove, hap, and gauntlet check. Okay, and I've got the two-inch socket from the PGT from the IEA onto the ratchet wrench with a good pull test. Second glove. Copy. Victor Glover making his way up the left side of the structure. He's heading to the middle strut to do the same thing he did on the other side, just uh, bolt down some of the bolts on the adjustable parts of that middle strut. Copy uh, nominal gloves, dry hat, and our sand uh, gauntlets are down. Okay, copy. Again, the astronauts will continue to do these periodic glove and hap checks, making sure that there are no cuts or scrapes uh, on their gloves, that their gauntlets or the fabric around their wrists are down, and that their hap, their helmet absorption pad on their head is dry. Uh, all three confirmed by both of the astronauts as they continue through these next steps. Uh, copy, Ike. This strip, unlike the uh, one on the right, is able to rotate. Uh, the relative to the telescoping portion. Okay, we copy and we see that rotation, Ike. We also have some metal shavings uh, on the upper portion, like N30. That's not actually right next to N30, but just on that side of the bracket, in the center where the threads, the big threads on the telescoping portion are. There's some metal shavings, if you can see that in my video. Okay, understand the metal shavings. Unfortunately, we do not see them on the uh, WVS. Are you able to point to it, uh, to where you see it? Okay, uh, thank you, Ike. We see that, and we think that that is not unexpected because of the uh, teeth mechanism that's there. And so we're going to have you uh, drive this with your long PGT. Your settings are Bravo 5, clockwise 2. Right in first, I'm at the right lower strut in position. Okay, copy, uh, Kate. I'll have words for you here shortly. And so, uh, Kate, you're just going to drive clockwise, and you're going to torque it to as high of a torque as you can get. Okay. And, Kate, 
We'll take a turn count once you're complete. And Ike, for you, um, again, you're going to start with Mike 30, the tab side, uh, but it's probably a good idea to alternate sides and just keep a running uh, turn count as you go with two turns on each side. From the helmet camera of Kate Rubens, she is using the ratchet wrench to tie down that lower right strut. Just a little extra uh, torque on that bolt to make sure it's nice and snug. Ratchet on, two inch on, and uh, all the torque I can, which is more than 30 decimal five bolt did not move at all. Okay, understand, Kate, and understand no turns at all. Okay. Guys, we're going to have a handover here in about 15 seconds. I'll catch you on the other side. Uh, Kate, we're discussing. Uh, we think we might be uh, maxed out here. Thank you, I got maybe a sixteenth of a turn there. But it's uh Another brief handover of that video from the International Space Station. This is uh, just expected to be a few, a few uh, minutes to uh, maybe even a matter of seconds until we regain that video. Again, Kate Rubens is using a ratchet wrench to perform a little extra torque on the lower right strut. Make sure that's nice and snug. Uh, the modification kit uh, to the mast canister. In the meantime, Glover is over on the middle left strut performing some of the same techniques he was doing on the middle right strut. There's an adjustable section that he needs to drive some bolts and secure it in place, and he's performing those techniques. Hey guys, back with you. How do you read? Okay, I have you same. Uh, Ike first, uh, can you verify that your left safer handle is down? Uh, the team thought they might have seen something on video that... I uh, didn't show it before we seated down. Okay. Rubens and uh, Glover both working on the 2B side, the mast canister. If you can see from this view, at the very base of the uh, rollout solar array, there is a soda can looking fixture. That's exactly where they are uh, on the earth facing side. Both of them are torqued out in the mark 30 side. The tab side is close together, but the tab is still loose. It's like a quarter of an inch, and the light 29 is a third of an inch. Okay. Uh, we copy Ike, and we see that. Um, can you just verify that the tab still moves loosely, or, or is it tight? The left paper handle is down. It was indeed up. Okay. Copy. Thanks, Ike. And the tab moves. The tab is loose. Okay, we see that. Thanks, Ike. Uh, Kate, the team is wondering if we could uh, reposition so that you're in a position to pull on the wrench rather than push. Yep, I can try that.
And like uh, we're discussing, I'll have further words for you here shortly. Okay, Ike, uh, we're going to drive each of the bolts back two turns, so your settings for that will be Bravo 5, counterclockwise 2. Bravo 5, counterclockwise 2, work. All right, and Frank, I am in a pole position with a small angle between an after wrench and a lower strut. It's not, it's not moving. Okay, we see that, Kate. Yep, uh, I think you're moving the whole structure, <laughs> but the bolt is not moving. Okay, I will stop doing that. Frank, I back them out to two turns each. And there's still a difference. The gap on the top, the outside is still smaller. Okay, understand. Tab side is still smaller. Uh, we're going to drive forward with a higher setting, Bravo 7, clockwise 2, and you'll start with the side with the bigger gap, and just, again, alternating two turns either side. Going down there, Kate? Oh, that's good. I'm waiting for next from the team. Yep, and uh, <clears throat> Kate, we're still with you and we're still discussing. Yep. No fight. No fight. Bless. All right, Frank, I've got two extra turns on the bottom, the M29 side, so the gap is a little more even mm -hmm. now they're both. A quarter of an inch. The tab is still loose and you're both torquing out. Okay, understand. Quarter, 
of an inch gap and both torquing out, and we see that the tab is still loose. And uh, Ike, I think we're going to call it as far as torquing it. Could you verify, essentially do a wiggle test, but in the rotational axis, so try to rotate um, the two pieces. So it won't be the collar, but the uh, telescoping piece and the bigger piece, and try to see if they rotate with each other. Yeah, I like the other side. They're, they're secure together now. I cannot rotate relative to the telescoping piece or the, the wider piece. And they both rotate together, they don't twist relative to each other. But whatever is tension in there is holding them both. Okay, we copy. Thanks, Eric. And Ike and Kate, uh, for both, we are discussing uh, plan forward. Okay, copy. So, Kate Rubens and Victor Glover both standing by, still on the 2B side of the uh, International Space Station's Port 6 truss. They have installed the uh, modification kit, and most of the bolts are secured. The teams on the ground are discussing the next steps, specifically for the lower right strut. Teams seem to be happy with the uh, left middle strut, the adjustable section there. Glover going to... Uh, attach some of the uh, multi-layer insulation, the white fabric you see over that uh, metal beam. In the meantime, the uh, teams on the ground are still discussing the uh, lower right strut, and we'll address it shortly. I sure could use the best of the 80 sound right now. Uh, yeah? You want me to sing it? <laughs> I, I,
Okay, uh, Ike, it looks like you read our mind there. Thanks for putting that Pippin in place and uh, putting the MLI in place. After you're done with that mid-strut MLI, if you can just verify that the MLI on the remaining uh, struts and pads is in place, that would be appreciated. All right, so Kate, uh, we think we have enough time here to try to back this bolt out. Uh, so we're going to get it started with the uh, wrench and then try to back it out with PGT. So again, the modification kit on the two Bravo channel, this is the uh, on the far port, port six truss uh, facing right down towards the earth. You can see a good view from the helmet camera of uh, Victor Glover. They do have the kit installed. Victor Glover is just working to make sure all the different parts of the middle beam are covered with the multi-layer insulation, the white fabric. He's going to do a check of the entire structure. In the meantime, Kate Rubens is going to try one last time to back out that bolt on the lower right strut, which is uh, being quite stubborn today, and give it one more go to see if it can uh, uh, secure that, that part of the structure to the uh, base of the mass canister on the International Space Station. Eight ratchet wrenches on the bolt. Let me know it turns counterclockwise. Okay. Uh Roger, Kate, and you can just uh, break torque with the uh, wrench, and then we'll move on to the PGT. All right, copy. Maybe uh, break torque plus a couple turns just to make sure. Quarter. And this is a pretty high running torture. Half total. One total turn. Copy, Kate, and you'll back it out with Bravo 7 counterclockwise 2. That's going to get two turns here. Okay, understand. Kate Rubens continuing to uh, troubleshoot that uh, lower strut, working with the pistol grip tool and the ratchet wrench to uh, give it another attempt to securing that bolt on the bottom of the strut. In the meantime, the station is 261 statute miles over uh, Venezuela, looking at uh, the Caribbean just off in the distance and about to pass over Brazil.
Hey, I, before you leave that work uh, that work site there, if you can just make sure that the MOI on the upper strut where that meets the bracket, that that is secure. Okay, Frank, I've already left the work site. The upper strut MOI is in place. I'm off the uh, mining bracket or the IPA structure completely. I'm back on the IEA. All right, and Frank, say again, how many turns expected? Uh, Kate, we're just going to drive the bolt completely out and do an inspection of the bolt and the interface. We anticipate approximately 10 turns. Uh, do you have an ex 10 turns. Okay, Ruben, standing by for the number of turns needed to completely undo the bolt on the lower uh, right strut. In the meantime, Victor Glover is uh, going around the structure, the uh, modification kit, and just uh, making sure that all of the multi-layer insulation, the white fabric that's completely in a... Uh, uh, wrapping the modification kit, making sure all parts of that are secured. And I, uh, it looks like from what we saw in the WVS, the MOI on the left upper strut, so the triangle where the left upper strut and the bracket meet wasn't quite uh, in place. Are you able to translate back up there and uh, address that? That's the upper strut. Okay. All right. Go to it. And Frank, that was seven and a half turns. Back it out plus my two, so pretty close. I'm taking a look at the interface for an inspection. I don't see anything on the threads. I'm going to fill my PTT and get a closer look. Copy, Gabe. And I see the interface completely clean. The mask canister. I'll check the bolt now. Okay. Copy, Kate, on the interface. And as you check the bolt, if you could depress it so that as many of the threads stick out as possible, that's great. Hey, Frank, I'm going to wait until she's done with this uh, and that be installed as you want to go. Look at that. It looks like both sides, the right and left upper strut. That's the uh, top uh, the real line nearest the mounting bracket is still folded up. Yep, Ike, we concur on both sides. And uh, we'll just wait until we're done with this lower strut so we're not applying unnecessary stress on the structure. Okay, yeah. Yeah, sorry, I didn't see that when I was on the right side. I adjusted the MLI on the lower strut, the top part of the lower strut. Yep, no worries. That's a tough angle to see from where you are. Okay. Hopefully you've got this in HECA. Pushing the bolt in. I see the same, uh, I call it yellowish orange, in the threads. Starting from the point away from the bolt head at the point at thread number four, going up eight threads. The actual thread itself was fine. We 
Absolutely copy, Kate, and uh, that was a great view. Thank you. And so, Kate, we'll try to drive again. And if you can try to manually align and uh, start turns. Spacewalk team here in Mission Control Houston inspecting that bolt, getting great views with the high definition camera. Uh, mentioned it looked good, so they're going to go ahead and try to reinstall the lower strut to the base of the math canister. Canted a little bit. I'd say a millimeter or two, and it will not rotate. Okay, I understand the uh, spherical bearing uh, essentially is misaligned and you're not able to push it into proper alignment. And uh, that would not work. Okay, uh, we're checking. Okay. Uh, that would not work. That's the negative. Copy, Kate. Uh, I'll have words for you shortly. Okay. I could possibly use the ratchet wrench on one side, but my... It's not moving, but we'll wait for your go. So, Kate, we think, uh, unfortunately, this is very similar to what we saw on the other side. Um, so we'll try similar to what we did, just hand start and drive the bolt and see if that uh, aligns it as we drive it. And as you hand started, it's two turns, right? Yes, sir. And... I've got a proposal for you, Frank. Why don't I hand start it as far as I can? Okay, that works for us. Thanks, Kate. Three. Five turns. Five turns on the Copy, five turns. And your settings will be Bravo 7, clockwise 2. Copy. Bravo 7. Clockwise 2. Set. And total turns we were expecting on this, got five down. So, Kate, uh, the total turn should should have been around 14, and so we're looking for another, oh, correction, 16, so we're looking for another 11 turns, but really we just want you to drive it to torque at this point. Okay, it works. All right, so a few uh, hand tightening uh, techniques, a couple extra turns with the hand, and now using the pistol grip tool. Uh, we'll see how this works for the... Uh, last attempt for the uh, installing the lower strut. 23 decimal zero, the green light, oh, that's a low torque spark. Okay. There's my good torque, 25 decimal four, that's another five turns plus a half after the low torque. Okay, uh, we see it, Kate, and we see the uh, wiggle as you move it. Can you do a manual ratchet at 30.5? Yes.
Copy, Kate. I understand torqued out. Didn't look like you got any additional turns. Uh, yeah, negative. No movement. Okay, uh, copy, Kate. And uh, at this point, we'll just take what, whatever turns you can get with the ratchet wrench. And Ike, at this point, you have a go to uh, address that MOI at the top of the triangle. The quarter turn. Another eight. Third eight. That's it. And it's, I don't know if you can see it in HECA, it is canted uh, from the side to side. And with that last eight, the bolt head is fully seated against the receptacle interface at the top. I think that's all you're going to get. Okay, we copy and uh, we see that, Kate. Uh, if you could uh, just do one additional wiggle test for us. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, ready for the wiggle test? So in my view, from the label M19, we call that top to bottom, which is the base of the joint. I've got no motion. That's how I'm looking at it, zenith meter. No motion. Left to right, I've got just a little bit. And the bolt is hitting closest to the M19. Okay, I understand a little bit of uh, left to right motion with the bolt hitting closest to M19. And in that axis, no, no movement. Copy. Okay, uh, what distance do you estimate between the black line being flush at its current location? You get an iPhone? About a millimeter. Possibly two millimeters. Okay, copy one, one to two millimeters. The degree of off centeredness is uh, look at the bolt head completely, completely flush. Copy, thanks, Kate. Okay, we're discussing. I'll have words for you shortly. So Kay Rubens was able to undo the bolt on the lower right strut, which has been giving uh, some difficulty on the installation process here. Uh, was able to reinstall it using the pistol grip tool and given an extra tug with the ratchet wrench, giving it a little extra torque. Uh, she's showing minimal movement uh, from some of her wiggle tests. Now the uh, engineers here in Mission Control Houston are assessing uh, some of the next steps, making sure that that is good to go uh, before they head into uh, potential uh, wrap-up procedures uh, to end today's spacewalk. Just waiting for word from Mission Control on uh, some of these next steps. The line's a little trickier when I'm running the BOT. <laughs>
while Rubens uh, awaits for uh, some guidance from Mission Control on the status of the lower strut. Glover is uh, continuing to secure that multi-layer insulation, the white fabric that completely surrounds uh, the modification kit, making sure all parts of the multi-layer insulation are completely secure. All right, uh, Kate, so first thing we're going to have you do is go ahead and do a socket swap from the ratchet wrench to the PGT, and then we'll stow the ratchet wrench in the two Bravo bags. Okay, copy. Go back to the PGT and the IEA. See it, I'm right behind you on the... Okay, copy. Make sure. Full test from the socket, two inches back on the PGT and the IEA. Copy, Kate. And Kate, you can stow that ratchet in the two Bravo bag. All right, and taking a look. The bike is and our tethers, maybe. My tether is underneath him, so I propose I leave it on structure, and if he's getting the two bottle bag, he pick it up, otherwise I have to cross tethers.
bring in the PGT back in the bag as well. Okay, we're going to, uh, we agree with your plan for the ratchet wrench. Uh, we're discussing the plan forward, which is going to affect what we're going to do with the PGT, so I'll have words for you shortly on that. Okay, I'll throw the ratchet wrench right next to the PGT. It's got an adjustable on it. Kay Rubens and uh, Victor Glover wrapping up some of their work on the 2B worksite. This is the 2 Bravo power channel on the Earth-facing side of the International Space Station's Port 6 truss, the very far end of the port side. Right now, Mission Control is uh, discussing some of those next steps given the timeline ahead. The configuration of the modification kit uh, meets the minimum requirements needed to just uh, keep it there in place. It is tied down. They may readdress it on a future space uh, walk to give the bolts a couple extra turns and make sure that it is secure and ready to uh, hold those solar arrays expected later this year. While they uh, deconfigure their work site, uh, redo their tethers and, and uh, put away some of their tools. They're just standing by for some words on what to expect next. Did you grab the PGT too or are we still waiting on that? We're still waiting on that. Okay. Got the ratchet. Okay. This is the ham helmet camera view from uh, NASA astronaut Kate Rubin. She's standing by for words from Mission Control on some of the next steps. She's uh, hanging on to one of the handrails at the integrated electronics assembly that holds the batteries that store power drawn from the 2B power channel. The solar arrays there and store power in new lithium ion batteries. Uh, so the first thing is great job on uh, working through the to Bravo side. I know there are some challenges there, so thanks for uh, sticking with us. Uh, the good thing is that structure is in a safe config for ISS, uh, and it can currently uh, will not affect BGA movement uh, or loads, and so we're in a safe config there. Excellent news, Frank. Uh, the plan forward as we see it is we're going to reposition the APFR over to the for Bravo side with 37, and that way it's available for the next EVA. Our goal will be to clean up the two Bravo site and then go up to the four Bravo side, build the upper triangle, and then see where we are from there. Uh, most likely, we're going to look at tie-down options for that. 
And we do have a hand over here in 20 seconds, so I'll have more for you guys on the other side. A good summary from... Uh As we lose video from a handover of some of that, uh, f some of the feeds from the International Space Station, we had a good summary from ground IV Frank Rubio. Essentially, the uh, m modification kit that Rubens and Glover both installed on the 2B power channel is in a good configuration for now. They may ad readdress uh, some of those uh, struts and during a later spacewalk, but for now, it's in a safe configuration. Uh, to take the loads that uh, go with uh, space station attitude control and, and the flight there. And Kate Nike, back with you. How do you read? Okay, I have the same. And Kate, you had a question right before the uh, handover? Yeah, would you like me to start getting the uh, WIFX and ATFR on my BRT? Uh, yes, Kate, that would be great, and that'll be your primary task, will be to reposition that uh, APFR with X. Thank you. For only building the upper triangle on the other side, do we need, uh, what do you want to do PGT-wise in, uh, in the bag? We have the long one on my swing arm and the short one's on the IEA. And I copy you, Ike. And Ike, we're, uh, we're checking on that. Frank, CB1, do you copy? I've got the WIFX and APFR that is on my BOT browser. So, Ike, we, we agree with your plan. Uh, we should only need the short PGT to build the upper triangle. And so if you want to swap out, you can leave the long PGT on the two Bravo side and take the short PGT with you. Am I leaving the bag or am I folding up the bag now? We're going we're gonna to leave the uh, bag for now, Ike. Okay, Frank, I've got the WIFX and I'm headed back in board the triangle and then Copy, Kate. And Kate, right now uh, on video we're seeing that your ingress aid is still extended. Uh, Ike, do you want to do a visual on that? Just make sure that you don't need to address that before she starts to translate. Can you get it where you can see it, Kate? Yep. Oh, yeah, I see it. It is. Yeah, got it. So again, the modification kit on the 2B power channel, you can see a really good view uh, from this angle as the sun sets in an or into an orbital nighttime. Station is on the... Still a limiting consumer world. Right, we're about two hours down on the timeline. Uh, to build the upper triangle and get it uh, properly stowed, we are looking at going slightly over seven hours. I just want to see how, how you guys are feeling and uh, what your thoughts are on that plan. 
That, that does account for plenty of time for uh, ingress, Kate. Yep. So it sounds like the crew is up for going on the other side on the four Bravo side that faces space. Translation path is going to look very similar from uh, when you went and got the uh, ratchet wrench. As the sun sets into an orbital nighttime, they're continuing to wrap up their work side on the two Bravo side. Ruben's about to take the portable foot restraint over to the other side. And uh, Glover working with some of the pistol grip tools, making sure he has the right one to take over to uh, the four Bravo side. Their next task is to build the upper triangle, which was the first task of today for the two Bravo side. They'll start that on the other side and uh, simply just tie it down, uh, leave it in a good configuration, uh, nice and tight for them to address it uh, uh, on, a, on the next spacewalk scheduled for March 5th. Rubens will head out the hatch with uh, Suichi Noguchi next Friday. Copy, Ike, and uh, then you can begin your translation to the four Bravo side. Yours is a much friendlier translation. You should just be able to go zenith on the outboard forward aspect of the IA. And uh, Ike, once you are at the bag, you can go ahead and secure the bag open. Guys, for your situational awareness, we are moving the arm for improved camera views.
Frank, I went up to the triangle. He missed, I believe, and now we're back in to ensure that a correct path. Sorry, back out, stupid. Yep, it's okay to understand you are on the zenith aspect of the trunnion structure, correct? Okay, so you will head outboard, and when you get to the near aspect of the IEA, you'll head aft. During an orbital nighttime, Rubens and Glover both heading over to the other side of the port six truss. Now on the space facing side, they'll start uh, some of the work on the 4B channel, getting some of their tools in place and ready to access very quickly on the next spacewalk. Okay, do you have a uh, handrail number for us uh, in your current location? APFR FX is a thing. Translate this one. Six five three eight five. I copy that I'm headed outward. Copy five three eight five. Thanks. checking Ruben's location. One of her tasks is to stow the portable foot restraint that she's been using throughout the duration of today's spacewalk get it uh, nice and close to her work site that she'll have to address next spacewalk. She'll once again take uh, the role of going in the portable foot restraint, perform a lot of the same tasks that she performed today, just on the other side of the Port 6 truss. The other tasks that Rubens and Glover will both attempt to tackle will be the construction of the upper triangle. This was the first section of the bracket that was built at the beginning of today's spacewalk and will uh, eventually be mounted on the top portion of the mast canister as the first portion of the modification kit that needs to be installed. Though it will likely not be installed uh, during this spacewalk, it will be installed later. So what they'll do is they'll just construct that upper bracket and then tie it down, make it nice and secure, uh, so they can go ahead and just grab it on the next spacewalk. Hey, Kate, if you can just hold your current uh, position, we'll have a translation path for you here shortly. Okay. I'm at 5316. I'm following it back to my green hat, I think. Frank, the bag is open. Um, will you get started on the upper triangle? Roger. Ike, um, you have a go to start the upper triangle. I have words for you here shortly. Hey, Kate. 
I have made the first and translation passwords from the ground. I'm just going to drop a local. I'm at 5327. Golden. All right, Kate, uh, I think we have your location. Sorry about that. We missed uh, a slight turn there. So you just need to go slightly outboard uh, to the IEA, and then you'll move forward, translate across the IEA. Okay. See outboard to the IEA? Yep, 5333. That handrail path should take you forward. Okay. Next handrail should be 5332. When you get to the forward aspect, we just want to make sure verify that your safety tether is routed correctly, and you should be heading back inboard. All right, so Ike, for you, uh, we're going to go ahead and retrieve the right upper strut, which is going to be straps one and two, and we're going to assemble that to the mounting bracket. Hey, Frank, is the intention to have that MLI in place, the stuff I just did on the other side after this upper triangle is oops. Now, uh, I, essentially, we're just going to build the upper triangle, and then we're going to temp stow it on top of the IEA. Okay, so you don't install that in a line until after you install it on the mass canister? Uh, hey, Kate. You are on the uh, correct phase, but we think you're heading outboard. You need to head inboard towards the Tronian structure. Okay, thank you. Yep, you're basically going back to where Ike's green hook is, and then you'll head zenith towards your green hook. So like a clarifying word, yes, as you are building the triangle, we will need that MLI in place. Um, Another short handover from our tracking and data relay satellites should be regaining that communication here shortly, especially audio in just a few seconds. Glover is building is busy building the upper triangle portion of the next modification kit that'll go on the four Bravo truss. Okay, Rubens is following her translation path or her uh, her path towards uh, the stow location for her portable foot restraint that she used for today's spacewalk. She's just going to put it uh, in a location close to where she'll need it for the next spacewalk on Friday. 
Okay, the tab is inserted to the right for strut. There are two turns on each bolt. And I apologize. Can you say again last transmission? Turns on each bolt by hand, and the tab is inserted ready for PGC settings, I believe. Okay, roger that. Your PGT settings will be Bravo 3, clockwise 2. Mark. And you're going to drive four turns on mic 13 and mic 14. Four turns only. Roger, Kate. And at this time, you're going to head outboard to the near edge of the IEA. And similar, you'll take the handrail path across to the aft section of the IEA. Okay. Bravo 3, clockwise 2, four turns total. Affirmative. Bravo 3, clockwise 2, two additional turns for four turns total. A little difficult to see as the station is in an orbital nighttime. Now 260 uh, statute miles. Uh, just over Malaysia now, heading on a northeastern course, but Glover has the pistol grip tool in hand and is constructing the upper triangle. Some of the steps that he just did uh, earlier on today's spacewalk, one of the first tasks he did, uh, he's just getting the upper triangle built for the next spacewalk. Uh, Kate, as you get to the corner there, you may want to fair lead on handrail 5338. Ike, next you're going to be retrieving the left upper struts and assembling that to the center pad. And I see a 5340. Copy, 5340, that's uh, correct. Okay, once that fair lead is in place, you'll head outboard to the outermost edge of the IEA. Right, I'm back in your territory. Awesome. I had a journey. Yeah, I heard. <laughs> okay. I am at the keel of the 5-3-4 uh, and 5-3-5-9. Five, three, five, Say again, please, Kate. I'm at 5364 and 5359, and I'll take a progressive taxi to the west. Roger. Yep, and uh, now you'll start moving station forward. Uh, you're looking for WIF 37. Right, and you want me to move down the IEA? Let me go on this triangle. Yep, uh, you, you may. You'll have to go on the other side of the A frame there. Okay. Yeah, Kate, okay, there's not a great uh, path here, so you can go up and over the A frame or on top of the batteries to get around the A frame. Up and over the east. Copy. And Ike, you're going to be installing the left upper strut, uh, L7, to the center pad.
can work. I cut it towards you. See what's 37. Okay. Copy with 37. Your clocking is going to be 6. Copy and thanks for the taxi. Ike, your PGT settings will be Bravo 1, clockwise 2. And you'll be driving. Clockwise. clockwise 2. Level 1, clockwise 2. Good words. You'll drive Mike 17 to torque. Level 1, clockwise 2. And drive it to torque. Affirmative. Let me know if I'm getting in your way at all. Okay, we have seven turns, level point on the torch green lights. Back line is flush. Hi, quick copy, seven turns, black line flush. Can you uh, repeat the torque, please? 7.8, 1.1.8. Copy 11.8, checking those numbers. All right, Ike, that is a good bolt on mic 17. You can release the rets from the right strut. Okay, uh, next you're going to be installing the left. This uh, mounting bracket is right next to your, right next to your helmet, so okay. big hunk of metal. Copy. Look at the right. Like you'll be installing the left upper struts to the mounting bracket. You can hand start those uh, two bolts. Glover continuing to assemble that upper triangle for the next modification kit on the 4B channel. Uh, there are three points that he needs to bolt. Uh, two of them have been completed. This last, uh, this last section will be uh, will complete the work to construct that uh, upper triangle. The plan as of now is once that upper triangle is uh, completely bolted together and uh, constructed. Uh, Glover will work to use different wire ties to tie down the upper bracket in place and leave it there for it to be installed on the next spacewalk on March 5th. Copy, Ike. Uh, your PGT settings will be Bravo 3, clockwise 2. You'll be driving both of these bolts for four turns total, two additional turns. And Kate, for you, once you have the WIFX installed with a clocking of six, the current settings for the WIFX and the APFR? Yeah, Frank, I'm just still working on the clocking. Okay, no worries. Yeah, no worries.
Strength Bravo 3, clockwise 2. For two more for four total times. Copy, Eric. All right, and for, thanks for the clocking. Is the stripe on that pointing towards the mass canister or towards the IEA? It's too dark to see. Uh, Kate, the handrail should be pointing towards the IEA to have the proper clocking. Thank you. That is clutch. Handrail towards the IEA. And Kate, once you get that installed, the current settings are good to go. The only thing we got to make sure is that the ingress aid is folded down and retracted to its max position. Okay, Frank, ready for service. Okay, Mike, uh, you'll be driving Mike 16 to Torque. We anticipate uh, 20 additional turns for a total of 24 turns. Uh, which? Okay, Mike 16. Kate Rubens wrapping up her efforts for stowing the portable foot restraint. It needs to be in a certain configuration to, to make sure uh, it is in a proper stowed uh, position. Again, it'll be retrieved uh, next spacewalk. Uh, it's just in a location that's close and can be easily retrieved uh, for the spacewalk on Friday. In the meantime, Glover, this is the helmet camera view from Victor Glover. You can see the translucent number 20 on the bottom right. Uh, he is wrapping up the installation, uh, the construction rather, of the upper triangle, uh, working on those last two bolts uh, to secure it together. Uh, once it is uh, fully constructed, uh, Rubens is scheduled to go ahead and help him out, gather some wire ties, and uh, temporarily stow it uh, next to the work site here. Uh, it will not be installed on the mass canister today. It will just be in a temporary stowed position, uh, just wired down and making sure it is secure before they go ahead and wrap up today's spacewalk. And Kate. Green light. 18.3. Copy. 18.3. Did you say 15 turns, Mike? Zero. 20 turns. I'm having it. Trouble getting it engaged to any clocking crank. Copy, Kate. Uh, we're checking. And I, can you uh, verify that black line was flush on mic 16? Black line flush. Sometimes the locking collar is sticking. Will it rotate to black on black, please? I'm well, not right now. Okay. All right, I, that, uh, that torque is good, or that bolt is good to go. You'll do uh, the same for Mike 15, approximately 20 additional turns. I got it in for the clocking of and leave it really hard first. And Kay, can you uh, repeat last? You said you were able to get it in with a clocking of what? Clocking. I think it's it's ten is pointing towards the IEA. I've got lots of black on black. It's pulling for the test. Break 19 turns, 18.3 on the door, green light. Left line flush. 
Roger, understand. Black line flush and checking those numbers out. Frank, I can confirm for you that the ingress safe is folded down and locked. Okay, we copy Kate, and uh, we also copied the uh, good pull twist test. We're just trying to figure out the orientation. Uh, we'll have words for you here shortly. And Kate, uh, we're going to have you hold in your current position. Uh, we're about five minutes away from a day pass, and we're hoping that that's going to be able to help uh, as far as situational awareness for the team. Copy. And Ike, you can release the red from the left yeah, upper stroke. Not your way. No, no, just, just giving you awareness. Thank you. Red is back to the bag. Roger, Ike. Uh, next, we're going to drive Mike. 14 and 13, so this will be the right upper stroke to the mounting bracket. Level 3, clockwise 2, right? Level 3, clockwise 2. Affirmative. I'm in a non-optimal position. Put it in. The good position would be where Ike and the triangle are. So I'm fighting against this. Uh, frame here, and I think uh, we probably leave it in at 10 and a little bit later when the, when the, I can get in a better position. Okay, uh, Kate, that sounds like a good plan, so we'll just have you follow your translation back around, your translation pack, path back around the IEA and to the inboard aspect of the bag. Next, Ike. Rubens and Glover side by side working on two different tasks. Glover, you see from helmet camera number 20 here, is driving those final bolts. Uh, he did install two of the three sides of this uh, triangle, just working on the bolts on the, that final side. In the meantime, uh, Rubens is trying to get a good configuration to secure that uh, portable foot restraint to its uh, worksite interface location, temporary stowed position, so it's easily accessible next spacewalk. On the torque, M14, black line push. Copy 19 turns, 18.4 green light, black line flush. And you can uh, push to mic 13, same settings. Good work. Okay, I understand 19, 18.4, green light, black line flush for mic 13. Okay, I 
Those are both uh, two good bolts. Mike 13 and Mike 14 are both two good bolts. About to enter into an orbital sunrise, you'll start to see the views here get a little bit brighter. We can see some of the work that uh, Glover has been doing to construct this triangle, that uh, Sun should illuminate his work a little bit better. Uh, also, we should get a better view of uh, Kate Rubin's work to temporarily stow the uh, portable foot restraint. Though from this particular angle, we are having some ratty coverage with her uh, helmet camera. All right, guys, uh, strong work. Now we're transitioning to uh, tying down the triangle on top of the IEA. Uh, but first, I'll take a glove, hat, and gauntlet check. I'll start with you, Ike. Happy dry. Gone is replaced. Right glove looks good. And we're quick. My left index finger. Got a where the RTV is missing. Let me get some better light on it. It's a weird lighting right now. Right at the uh, intersection of the second and third uh, digit or joint and the in the pre outboard side, closer to my thumb. Um, the RTV is missing, it looks like a small hole in the RTV, thick in the fabric. Standing by your check. Okay, uh, Ike, we copy and we see at least part of that on the uh, WVS. You can go ahead and just take the, every, uh, as much time as you need to do a proper inspection on that. So Craig, I can't tell if, it, if there's a hole in the fabric or if that's just the fabric, the weave of the fabric. I'm thinking it's the weave of the fabric. Plot into the RTV where I can see it clearly. Okay. We copy it. Take this over here, maybe I can show you and take a suggest for yourself. And for my glove check. Yep, and that's exactly what we were thinking. Nominal. Nominal. Well, the RTV peeling in the right middle finger, dry hat, and I'll have it Copy, Kate. Thank you. Inboard and then send down the IEA. Affirmative. Frank, are we going to use a long duration uh, pattern to do on this? And if so, I can maybe pin so one now. Uh, we are, like, right. we're going to use both long duration tight on tethers. Where? To the uh, mining bracket or to the pin on Yeah, 
Yep, uh, and correction, we're actually going to use three long duration tie downs. Uh, I uh, disregard last. It'll just be two long duration tie down tethers, and they will be on each of the handrails on the upper struts. Nearing the six hour mark into today's spacewalk, Glover has completed the construction of that. Uh, upper bracket his next task will be to go ahead and secure that upper triangle uh, to the uh, truss of the International Space Station it won't be installed on the mast canister for this spacewalk but it will be easily accessible and already constructed uh, ready to go for the next spacewalk coming up March 5th And you can see just beyond that uh, upper triangle, the uh, portable foot restraint is stowed in its position. That was the work that Kate Rubens did uh, just a little earlier. You are uh, on my left hand. Yep, I'm pointing it. I don't know where to move it to, so I'm just going to hold still. Yes, I'm, you just hold still and then you. I'm sick of you. Can you confirm? Yep, it's, uh, the finger is centered on the camera. Can you just get the uh, get your hand closer to the camera? Ike? I'll bring the, the camera closer to the finger. That works too. Maybe a little down for the light. I think that's fabric. If you look at the bottom of that digit, you see some beaver spaces in the fabric. It just stands out because it's in that spinner, a hole in the RTV, gap in the RTV. Okay, Ike, uh, so we'll, uh, I think we have as good a view as we're going to get. We'll just uh, attempt to minimize that hand, minimize the use of that hand as we uh, finish up the uh, tie down and clean up and then uh, head back to the airlock. Copy. Engineers here in Mission Control Houston taking a look at Victor Glover's left glove. The upper triangle on top of the IEA. I'll kind of walk you in. The center pad is going to be facing outboard and the bracket is going to be facing inboard with the hooks pointing up. The triangle is going to be centered on the middle battery in the middle row of batteries. So the triangle is essentially sitting smack in the middle of the IEA with the bracket facing Inboard. Okay, copy. So that triangle will essentially sit right on top of the lithium ion batteries that uh, make up the interface of the electronics assembly that they're referencing. This is pretty close to the work site for uh, the next spacewalk. They have the proper configuration. And they'll just, uh, the next step will be to just tie it down. Okay, free hooks up, and was it center pad outboard or center pad inboard? The center pad is outboard, and the bracket is inboard. Okay. 
So it's going to sit like this, baby. Uh-huh. It's going to sit. So that's, we'll see. Yeah, so that's got to be up there too. This is the center pad. Oh, thank you, sir. So it's going to be like this? Yep, yep. On that battery. I got gotcha. you. And, uh, see, I can go over there. Let's see. Where are we going to hook it? Uh, Yep, so uh, I, your description was uh, correct. And on the side nearest to you, so on the forward aspect, it'll be on handrail 5353. And on the aft aspect, it'll be on the opposite handrail 5306. We've got a 5355, five, five. Uh, not 53. Can you give us tell us where that 5353 five, might be? Yeah, sorry guys, uh, we had an incorrect number here. So it's 5350 is what you're looking for on the forward aspect. I've got that. Okay. So we're going to need to uh, extend those long duration side on tethers. Mm -hmm. On five three five zero, do you have a preference for outboard or inboard expansion in the line bus? Uh, no preference, Kate. Okay. All right. Am I folding up the bag on the two Bravo sides? Ike, we will be folding up that bag. Uh, we'll just finish this side uh, together and then have you translate down there to pick up that bag. Guys, we have a handover in about 10 seconds. I'll see you on the other side. Once again, another handover of some of the video coming down from the International Space Station. Uh, Rubens and Glover are tying down the constructed uh, upper triangle that makes up the modification kit of the 4B uh, channel, power channel. Like so, and then they'll get it. Okay, I'll stay here with the tether is on it. It's on the handrail. I see. Yeah, because you're just going to have to pass that to me. Absolutely. I'll extend it, and then I'll pitch this thing down to you. Yeah. And guys, I'm back with you. On the opposite, on the aft side of the IEA, you'll be looking for handrail 5349. Copy 5349 on the opposite side of the IEA. I'm headed there. It's going to hand it to me across the IEA. Copy, Kate. Back on board the International Space Station, this is Victor Glover handling the upper triangle. Rubens has made her way to the other side of the integrated electronics assembly to get a good handle on the other side of that uh, upper triangle. She's going to help to tie down the upper triangle to the integrated electronics assembly right on top of the batteries. Uh, keep it in a nice tied down stowed position ready to access in the next spacewalk. We're now a little over six hours into today's spacewalk. Well, this was not as easy to extend. Okay. Thank you, Miss Wiggins. No problem. All right, hooks up, center pad outboard. I only got a, about a foot and a half of it out. I'll get the rest. 
Actually, that might be fine. It looks like you've got plenty for now. All right, Frank, I have a second long duration tie down tether to 5349. Copy 5349. That's a good hand round number. Would you like us to stench these together simultaneously? I need to. Affirmative, Kate. Uh, cinching them together will work best to cinch it down properly. Yeah. Well, hold on. I'm not ready. Yeah, me neither. Don't worry. And Ike, you may also have to close the bag before you cinch it down to get proper. Back around your left foot. Look around my left. The uh, long duration turn on the other now. So your feet are kind of in a bad spot. If you swing them inboard, more in line with the handrail, perfect. Huh? I've got the strap in hand and we're in a good orientation. Okay. When you're ready to cinch, I'm ready to cinch. And as well, I'm going to go slow. Hey, Ike, before you guys cinch down, we will need that bag closed. And so you'll have to, you have the best uh, essay there, whether you need to do that before or after you cinch down. Uh, I'm not sure what you said. If it's about the bag lid, I'll get that in a minute. I'm not worried about the bag lid. Okay, copy. That's fine. Okay, we got a lot of slides. Yep. I'm going to pull it evenly. A bit more. Say again? Are you done? Uh, I, I don't know. How tight do we want it? Well, um, I think if we go at the same time, we can get it down pretty tight. Yeah, I mean, just go until we can't pull. Yeah. I could be good now. I just. I'm also going to be able to close the, the buckle. I don't think you want to. Okay. Hey, Kate, from what we're seeing on the HECA, it looks like the strap might have come out of the alignment uh, on the uh, top metal there, on the bottom side of the buckle. 
you'll have to feed that uh, strap. Mine did too. <laughs> Both Rubens and Glove are working with long-duration tie-down tethers. This will help secure that upper triangle to the integrated electronics assembly right on top of the lithium-ion batteries. Uh, that will be its stowed position for the next few days until they're able to go out again on March 5th. Uh, Rubens will head out the hatch with uh, Suichi Noguchi uh, to conduct the next spacewalk. This will be the, one of the first items on their agenda to uh, uh, dismount the... Uh, upper triangle and install it onto the mast canister of the uh, 4B power channel. Nice job. Good, good hand de dexterity there. Hey, you shredded how many bolts by hand today? All right, guys, so while you're working on that, just want to let you know we are at 6 hours and 11 minutes of PET. Uh, EV2 battery is still the uh, con limiting consumable at 7 hours and 52 minutes. And, again, the plan is here to uh, close 4B, pick up the bag at 2B, and then head back and ingress. For this tether, do you need it an eye over the buckle? Do you need any of the strap in? It goes on the outside with the wire tether. Yep, okay, so you'll uh, want to close the thermal cover, fold up the strap on top of it, and then use the wire tie on top of that. So again, uh, securing the upper triangle to the integrated electronics assembly. Uh, this was constructed ahead of time in preparation for a spacewalk uh, next Friday to continue the work of the installing the modification kits for future solar array upgrades. This is the last last item on the task list today. After this, they'll clean up their work site on the 4B channel, wrap around to the other side on the 2B channel where they spend most of their time today, pick up the strut bag uh, that carried the uh, struts needed to install the modification kit. They'll pick that up and bring it back to the airlock uh, to complete today's spacewalk. Now six hours, 13 minutes into today's spacewalk. Frank, big picture, uh, we'll take that. Yep, uh, Kate, that looks like a, a good tie down on the upper triangle, and so you'll translate back around to the other side of the IEA. We'll finish uh, closing up the bag up here on the full Bravo side, and then Ike will translate down to the two Bravo side and fold up the bag there, and then we'll head in and ingress. Okay, you want us to both work on one bag at a time, or do you want me to go to work on the two Bravo bags? The strap is disconnected. The lead straps are disconnected. 
Uh, it's your preference at this point, Ike, but yeah, we, we think, uh, Kate, if you're okay with it, uh, finish closing up this bag. Uh, I can head down and start folding up the other bag. Did you do that? Yep. Okay. You short me. So that wraps up the uh, tasks for today. They completed the tie down of that upper bracket to the integrated electronics assembly. Now it's ready to access uh, for the next spacewalk. Now they'll just divide and conquer. You can see Victor Glover already on his way to the other side to the 2B uh, channel. Uh, already at the uh, empty bag. This carried the struts needed to install the modification kit on the 2B uh, power channel, which they completed uh, earlier in the spacewalk. Rubens will remain on the other side and just wrap up and close the bag uh, on the 4B side. That bag will remain uh, on the truss. Glover will go ahead and close up this bag on the 2B side since it is empty and take it back in uh, with him. The modification kit on the 2B power channel is in a good configuration. They may uh, go back and just take a look at some of the bolts on a later spacewalk, uh, but for now it's in a good configuration, can handle the loads uh, given on the space station with attitude control and all of that. Uh, in the meantime, they'll just wrap up today's activities and head back in uh, to conclude today's EVA. And Ike, uh, just for your essay, uh, PGT number eight should be in B, um, bag number two. We just want to make sure that that's off before it gets stowed. Copy. It is OFS. Copy off.
And uh, Ike, as you're closing up the two Bravo bag, we got a really good inventory three here WVS, but we only see one camera. I just want to verify you see two cameras. Yeah, we'll do those on the opposite side of the one you can see. Okay, copy. Understand. Thanks. Well. Hey, Frank, I got steps Alpha through Delta and cinch down. Copy, Kate. And that looks like a good config. Okay. Give me a survey. Okay, and so Kate, that looks like a good config on the four Bravo bag. You can head back towards your green hook. Okay. How are you doing, Ike? Do you need any help? That's all the help you want to give, but <laughs> <laughs> so, go ahead and be the green hook. I'll be behind the short hook. Okay. So a quick recap, the astronauts are uh, oh, are completing their tasks for today. Uh, you see from the helmet camera of Victor Glover. What we're seeing, your space bag folding skills are pretty solid. Thank you, sir. This is the empty bag that carried out the struts where uh, he and uh, NASA astronaut Kate Rubens constructed the modification kit on the 2B uh, power channel. He's going to take that empty bag back with him uh, to the airlock. Rubens is already on her way. She checked out the portable foot restraint, looked good and a good configuration. The bag was all closed with all the tools that they'll need for the next spacewalk. Now they're just going to go ahead and uh, head back to the airlock and conclude today's spacewalk. Outboard and uh, wait for Ike. Uh, you'll be leading on the way back to the airlock. Okay. Copy, I will head later. I've got my suit to the pack reassembled.
I screen hook. Copy it. All right, fruit by the site is done. I'm going to get this pumped up on my BOC and hit back. Looks good, A great view of the port truss on the far left side. You can see Victor Glover wrapping up uh, his procedures. He's just folding up the bag. He's going to tie it to his body restraint tether and uh, take it with him all the way back to the airlock. In the meantime, uh, Kate Rubens, you see off to the right, she's in the suit with the red stripes. Uh, she's just uh, hanging on, waiting for uh, Victor Glover to finish up. She's already finished her tasks, making sure the foot restraint is secured and uh, as well as the uh, triangle bracket, the uh, upper triangle, secured to the International Space Station. Both of them have completed their tasks for today and are heading back to the airlock to uh, wrap up today's activities. The two of them successfully installed a uh, modification kit to the 2B power channel. You can see it on the mask canister over there on the far side, kind of where uh, Victor Glover is. It's the white structure in front of the mast canister. That's the soda can looking uh, structure at the base of the solar arrays. That modification kit uh, will house a future solar array upgrade. Uh, IROSA solar arrays will be deployed from that modification kit. Right now that modification kit is in a good configuration. Teams on the ground will assess to make sure it's it's good to go. Uh, they can also address it on a later space walk if needed. But the primary task for the next spacewalk on uh, March 5th will be to duplicate the efforts that we saw today on the 2B power channel. They'll just do it on the other side, on the 4B power channel, uh, sort of at the bottom left of your screen. Okay. You'll be heading to 5309 to retrieve your greenhouse. And uh, Kate, we lost the heck if you're able to recycle power. We appreciate it. Yeah, does that work? Okay. Hey, I see you. Found it. Frank, did you get Hector back? Okay, we copied and we're checking uh, the config now. Okay. And I'm going to head in for a wait for I to put it back. And Ike, after you uh, pick up your green hook, if you can check on that glove real quick, and then you guys can initiate your translation back yeah. to the airlock. Okay, so let's copy. Okay, we copy. 
And with just for your SA, we have about 10 minutes left on this day pass. And with that, their uh, work is done. You see uh, Victor Glover on the left there with an empty bag in tow. That bag carried the struts you see off to the left there at the uh, mast canister at the base of the solar arrays, the white structure covered in multi-layer insulation. They completed their tasks for today and Kate Rubens and Victor Glover both making their way along the port truss back to the Quest airlock to wrap up today's activities. They have about 10 minutes of daylight left. We might see the sunset as they uh, enter the Quest airlock and conclude today's spacewalk. Rubens taking the lead as Glover trails back to the Quest airlock. The two spacewalking astronauts in the International Space Station are flying 270 statute miles over the South Atlantic Ocean, about to cross into an orbital nighttime. Nice catch on that, Ike. the brake pedal first. I will, yes. Okay, copy. Good words, Ike. And that's for both the port and starboard two. Now, 
Can you okay. board? Tad easier without EZ3 and EZ4. Okay. Okay. Yeah, enough. Yeah, we see the card for one. Yes. We copy. Thanks, Rick. And Ike, before you head down the CETA spur, we want you to verify that both safety tethers are clear of the MT path. Copy. Top of the seat of Okay, thank you. The safety tethers are meter of phase one. And when we both go down the CS part, they'll be uh, kind of snug up like a little finger lead off the um, covered lab strut. And I believe that keeps them clear of the uh, MT reservation set. We copy, Ike, and we concur. And as a reminder, you will be ingressing the airlock first, Ike. Just has asked, make room for him. Great views as the two astronauts make their way to the Quest airlock. You see on the right there, Rubens is already there. She's the suit with the red stripes. Uh, Glover trailing very uh, shortly behind. Rubens will need to move out of the way to make sure. Uh, Glover ingresses first. He's got the task uh, as the EV2 position to enter this airlock first. Rubens will uh, enter shortly after Glover, and she has the task of, of closing the hatch. The spacewalk will officially end when repressurization begins. You guys have a go for opening the hatch thermal cover. And Ike, you can stow the strut bag bundle on the large, small airlock rep. You ready to copy uh, waste fitters? We're ready. On my left viewing sender. Waste fitter, gate closed, slider locked, black on black. Then to the second waste fitter, the airlock. First one, gate closed, slider locked, black on black. Second, gate closed, slider locked, black on black. 
the left hearing extender, gate closed, slider locked, flash on black. And Kate, that is a good load path for EV1. You see from the helmet camera of Victor Glover, as the EV2 position, it's his job to work on this interface. Well, they'll connect uh, themselves to station power and water once again and uh, switch some valves to not rely on uh, station on the suit's battery power anymore. And the bag is on the airlock. Correct. Or small. Okay, that is a good config for you, right? Uh, Kate, you can turn off your HECA and verify green LED is off. Sorry, uh, should have okay, read you that while I was still available. Set, I got a mirror. All right, HECA's off, green LED is off. We copy, Kate. All right, Kate, uh, once you get a go from Ike, you can move EV2 yellow hook to EV1 red reel. Okay. Okay. I copy your go. Okay, I see my red reel spring. You got this. And I just got a wait for the Black, black on black. Good full test. You'll go. On EV1, red reel, yellow hook, gate closed, slider lock, black on black. Copy, that's a good secondary load pass, Kate. Now you can move EV2 green hook to aft external D ring. Copy. And And Kate, we're going to have a handover in about 10 seconds. So Ike's green hook will go to the aft external D ring. Your green hook will go to the forward external D ring. Another short handover in uh, video and audio coming from station. We should be regaining that shortly. In these final moments, uh, Glover is already in the uh, airlock. He's ready to switch some of the valves to and, and connect the suits back to station power, water, and air. Rubens is uh, busy reconfiguring those tethers, making sure they're all in a good configuration before she uh, enters the airlock as well. It'll be her job to close the hatch and seal it, make sure everything's good before they begin the repressurization and conclude today's spacewalk. Upon the start of repressurization, that will officially end today's spacewalk. Green hook to the forward steering, gate closed, slider lock, back on black. Okay, I copy Kate, and that is a good config. Uh, as you ingress, can you please verify that the hatch pit pin is in place? 
Director Kim. And then you will move your EV-1 Yellow Hook to the Mini Workstation and Ingrid Sierra Yellow Hook. EV1 yellow hook going to my mini workstation. Copy. Yeah, that is not a good config. I have EV2 yellow hook on my mini workstation. All right, can you uh, pause here and I need a, a EV2 yellow hook? You just let it go to me, I'll take it. I've got a good safety chain and I'll come in with my red reel. Okay. Yes, I've got it. So once you're good, you have to go to ingress. Okay. Okay, we copied all of that. Um Good catch. Uh, you do have your own load path to the airlock, and so we are. Uh, you still are a good config. Airlock, and so we are. Uh, you still are. Yep. And I've got my yellow hook on. I'm in workstation. I guess you can see my feet. Hang in. As the sun sets on the International Space Station, Kate Rubin's entering the Quest airlock, getting ready to conclude today's spacewalk. And I extend to move my feet nader. You to move your feet nader? Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. I think I've got a good... I've got a good... Pin check. Get my thermal cover. Copy. Pin check and thermal cover. Okay, we see the thermal cover closed, and you can attach the Velcro strap. Negative. Not quite good.
thermal cover is closed. Ready for your next. Okay, for both of you, you will remove SUs from storage pouch, remove DCM covers and Velcro to DCM, and connect the SUs to your DCMs. With the uh, thermal cover to the station's airlock closed, Frank Rubio will finish up his role as the ground IV by walking the crew through the initial pre-repressurization uh, pre steps. We'll do this uh, until handing back over to Suichi Noguchi, who's standing by in the station's uh, equipment airlock. Noguchi will walk them through the repressurization sequence uh, after this uh, this set of pre-repressurization tasks. Copy. SUs locked for both. For both. Switch water off, which is forward. Expect H2O is off. Message. V1, water off. EV2. Okay, caution, do not close hatch until EMU water off for two minutes. We start our timer. Yeah. And Ike for closing the hatch, I'm gonna head towards you. I don't know if you can see my feet. Way some more clear. Yeah, um, give me a chance, please let me move for a second. Okay. Go back the other way. Okay. Which way are you going to rotate your cliff? Because if I can avoid your cliff, so I plenty of room. Want to be aft or forward? I'll be forward. Okay. Um, yeah. oh. Okay, you want to be forward? Um, yeah, that's where the good hand drill is. Okay. Uh, my feet out of the way? Yep, and my cliff is Venus. Okay, my place is rotated station forward, and I am port as far as I can go. Let's get clearance. For you, I can verify tools and tethers are clear of the airlock. Got eyes on my deep press refresh key card. And no tools, tethers. Off the hatch. Copy, Kate. All right, Kate, two minutes is up. You have a go for closing and locking the hatch. Suichi so Noguchi uh, there at the hatch window, looking at his crewmates on the other side who are concluding their spacewalk. He'll take the lead as the suit IV, guiding them through the, the repressurization procedures and eventually opening the hatch and bringing them in the equipment lock to doff or take off their suits. You see Mike Hopkins in the foreground there, uh, checking over some of the upcoming procedures. He'll be aiding Noguchi uh, through some of these next tasks. Frank Rubio taking the lead as the pre-repressurization uh, tasks. He'll be handing over to Noguchi shortly.
That's my cook. Still getting a little bit of video from inside of the crew lock. This is uh, Kate Rubens working through her procedures to close the hatch. There it goes. It's closed. Can you move your feet um, a little bit? If you don't need gas, then it feels closed. I can only get about half a turn on the handle. Yeah, that handle does not turn far. Okay. Uh, if you can pull it up, though, it's not closed. But you got to make sure, make sure it's flush mm -hmm. before you rotate. You just flush and it has a mechanism that will pull it down. So make sure it's all the way in the inlet because it only travels like one turn. Okay. Make sure it's flush, and then yeah, pull, see if it moves at all. If it's it's flash, it won't move. It does not. Yeah, that's it. Right. And then okay. watch this. Yep. Okay. It has to close the much. Nice job. All right, great job, guys. Okay, Ike on the UIA, check oxygen, EMU, one and two valves, two valves open. Oxygen, EMU one open, oxygen, EMU two open. Switch power, EV, one and two, two switches on, ON. EMU one power on, good LED, EMU two power. On EVs two power on good LEDs. Copy. Good LEDs. Check power EV one and two volts. Eighteen decimal zero to nineteen decimal zero. Eighteen point six times. Eighteen point six times two. Copy. Uh, for both, switch power to SEU. Expect warning tone. Too. All right, guys. Great job out there. I'll turn you over to Soichi, and uh, really appreciate your hard work. I know there's a lot of challenges, but the team really appreciates it. Hey, Frank, you were awesome. It's been a pleasure. Thank you very much, and thanks to the uh, entire IRESA team. Thanks, Frank. Thanks, Dana. Great work with you guys today. And sorry, I do have one Delta, uh, that, like just when you said that, Frank, I lost Tom in my left ear cup. I still got it in my right. You took 
tadi. I hear you. And uh, Frank, thanks for the great work. Uh, from here, so it will take over for crew of repress. Uh, both EB1, EB2, how do you hear me? Richie, I've got you loud and clear in my right ear. Richie, loud and Okay, uh, EB2, uh, EB1, EB2, DCM, O2, up to press. Okay, you with us? I'm sorry. I, I, the ear cup may be an ear block in my left ear. Do that right now. Okay. okay. EB1. 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 All oh, through okay. to press. Okay. Yes. You hear the Luigi? I can. Okay. And that thing works. Wait. EB1, O2, X leader, to press. Copy, EB1, EB2, copy, to press. And EB1, check, EB hatch, MPEG closed. EB hatch, MPEG is closed. Copy, and uh, both EB and EB2, we're going to start equalizing the pressure. If you feel the speed is too fast, uh, please say so. Yeah, so, for, Ricky, for your awareness, I've got uh, already an ear block in my left ear, I think. Copy, we make it a uh, minimum opening. No, I'm, I'm good with going ahead and bringing it up, and I'll tell you if there's an issue. Media need to just start it. Uh, Open the throttle at uh, zero, uh, 1840, 1816. Copy. Okay, so that's good uh, variability in my left ear. Copy, EB1. She's actually feeling a little better with the uh, increased pressure. We're going in the right direction.
This is Mission Control Houston. We do have confirmation. Repressurization is underway. The clock stopped for uh, today's spacewalk at 7 hours 4 minutes, concluding at 12.16 p.m. Central Time. Repressurization is slow and steady, about 0.7 psi right now. They will climb up to 5 psi before performing a hold and a check to make sure the pressure is holding before resuming pressurization up to equalize with the International Space Station uh, just above 14 psi. You are leaving to all these are comfortable. I can increase the weight. How do you say? Go for a moderate increase. Me too. So how about EV2? Hey, I, uh, is it okay to increase the weight? EV2. Yeah, EV1, EV2, just past uh, 2 PSI, we're going to increase a little bit, okay, it's okay. EV1 is good, EV2 is good. EV2. That's the good thing from my ear block. That's good. Thank you. 
Again, repressurization is underway. It's slow and steady. We're at about three pounds per square inch, and we'll pause at five, hold pressure, and make sure that uh, the inside of the crew lock is holding pressure before resuming up to uh, equalize with the International Space Station. In the meantime, we do have statistics for you based on today's seven-hour, four-minute spacewalk. This was the 235th spacewalk in support of station uh, assembly, maintenance, and upgrades. It was the third conducted in 2021, the fourth spacewalk for Expedition 64. For Kate Rubens, this is the third spacewalk in her career. Her career total is now 19 hours, 50 minutes, 5-0 minutes. This is also the third spacewalk of Victor Glover's career. His total, 19 hours, 20 minutes. Today's spacewalk lasted uh, seven hours, four minutes, beginning 5, 12 a.m. Central, ending uh, 12, 16 p.m. Central time. And the total spacewalking time for all 235 spacewalks aboard the International Space Station come out at 61 days, four hours, and 11 minutes. This was also the first time an HD camera was used on a spacewalk. Some of those views provided from the helmet camera of uh, Kate Rubens, the new HECA camera. We'll be seeing those again uh, in the near future. Also, the two spacewalking astronauts today, Kate Rubens and Victor Glover, are both part of the Artemis team. They're part of a crew of 18 astronauts. Uh, selected to help pave the way for the next astronaut missions to and around the moon as part of the Artemis program. Repressurization has reached five pounds per square inch. We'll just hold here for a second. Make sure it's holding pressure before resuming up to equalize with the International Space Station, which is a little bit more than 14 pounds per square inch. We'll continue to provide coverage throughout the duration of uh, this repressurization sequence. Uh, the hatch will open and we'll bring both of our astronauts inside and we'll continue our coverage until uh, they start uh, doffing their suits, taking off their helmets and gloves, and uh, concluding today's coverage of the uh, EVA-71. Okay, great to hear yours too. Nice job today. You guys crushed it. <laughs> I was going to have uh, Sarita tell you hi for us if we were. Thanks, Anna. Okay, Houston Station on 1, uh, step 7. P2 is also 258. We're going to proceed to step 8. We copy and concur. Okay, EB1, EB2, check. Grub heaters, OFF. EB1, OFF. EB2. 
And EV1, EV2, uh, check gloves for contamination. EV1, no contamination on gloves. EV2, negative. Okay, and uh, there was warning. I assume there's no cough, uh, cough symptoms today? That's correct, no cough symptoms. Okay, great. Next is action. EV1, EV2, call to act to IV. EV1, IV. EV2, IV. Copy. Next, we're going to bring the uh, equalization to norm, but uh, initially we start from the slower rate, if Thank you guys are okay. That's good. That sound you're hearing now is the uh, resuming of repressurization. We had a good hold at 5 PSI, did a leak check, and uh, everything looked good. We're now uh, resuming that uh, repressurization back up to equalize with the International Space Station, just about uh, above 14 PSI. We're now passing 6.5 PSI. Repressurization still looking good. We're a little more than 12 PSI at this point. We're heading just above 14. In Houston, I am only hearing uh, breaking Vox audio side tones in my right ear. Your box pretty much resolved, and so I do think uh, Comcap left ear is down. Copy. And we copy.
And the EB1, EB2, let me know if you hear the alert tone for the TPDT close to zero. This is station number one. Uh, looks like the pressure is uh, equalized. Uh, which is well, uh, we will move on to the one decimal two for the CDA. Copy, and we are go for that. UB2, we're going to open the, the hatch for decal. Copy. Two. All right, pressure is equalized on the other side of the hatch, just a little bit more than 14 psi. So Ichi Noguchi going to work uh, the hatch opening procedures. He'll then bring uh, both Rubens and Glover back into the positions we saw them in at the beginning of the spacewalk on either side, the left and the right of this uh, equipment lock, and start doffing or taking off the suits. Another handover of our satellite coverage providing video feeds from the International Space Station. In the meantime, the crew aboard will continue to work through the procedures to get both of the crew members, Kate Rubens and Victor Glover, back inside the equipment lock, back inside the International Space Station, and uh, begin taking off or doffing their suits, the helmets, the gloves, uh, and give them the much-needed break uh, after a seven-hour and four-minute spacewalk. The teams that you're seeing here in the International Space Station Flight Control Room have been uh, watching the duration throughout the duration of today's spacewalk, coming in at the beginning of the Orbit 2 shift, led by Flight Director Marcos Flores. Teams here will continue to remain on console through some of the next procedures. We'll continue to provide coverage until we uh, start seeing the doffing of uh, both of the crew member suits, the helmets that come off, and we'll go ahead and wrap up our coverage. And my FPU was routed uh, effectively. You may want to turn me that way. Airlock station on one when convenient. Just so you know, we had a brief handover and now we are down KU, so we're not seeing uh, what y'all are doing. Let us know if you're ready for our step four. Yeah, Houston Station 1, uh, please take care of a step for the end of the safe uh, Can you see my, my FPD routing, what I was talking about? I can't tell which way it's just go. Copy, speaking. Yes, okay.
Now regaining some of those views from the International Space Station after a short handover, you can already see uh, Victor Glover is already inside the equipment lock and that safer unit, sa simplified aid for EVA rescue, is already off. One, no response required. The crew is no longer hot mic to the ground. That simplified aid for EVA rescue, the safer unit provides uh, propulsion should the uh, astronauts become untethered during today's spacewalk. But uh, as you all tuned in, uh, you notice the tether checks throughout the duration of the spacewalk to maintain that uh, connection to the International Space Station, save it was not needed, but can be used as an extra precaution. With the safer uh, unit uh, removed and stowed, They'll connect uh, Glover to uh, one of the wall units there and begin uh, doffing uh, the suit. That includes taking off the helmet and gloves. And they'll repeat the same steps for Rubens. First uh, removing her uh, safer unit and stowing it, and then uh, begin doffing her suit. Today's seven hour and uh, four minute spacewalk uh, included the installation of a modification kit to the 2B power channel. This is the power channel uh, that faces the Earth on the far port side of the International Space Station. That modification kit meant to uh, uh, very soon. Noguchi just communicating to Rubens that uh, his next steps will be to remove her safer unit. But of course today's seven hour, four minute spacewalk included the installation of that modification kit. Uh, it will eventually house solar arrays that will be installed uh, later this year. Uh, on the two uh, channels that uh, the, our crew members worked on today, they of course completed the 2B power channel. They may readdress some components uh, of that channel on a uh, later spacewalk, but the modification kit itself is structurally sound and in a safe configuration. The 4B power channel, they got started uh, by building the first element of the modification kit, the uh, upper triangle. This is the bracket that goes at the uh, very top of the configuration towards the top of the mast canister that deployed the original solar rays. Rubens is scheduled to uh, continue that work next Friday. You see Suichi Noguchi on the left there, who's the suit IV, the lead for uh, walking our astronauts through the depressurization and now just recently repressurization uh, sequences. Of course, Mike Hopkins off to the right helping him. And some of the Russian cosmonaut uh, colleagues are coming uh, in the back there. You can see helping uh, Suichi Noguchi stow that safer unit off of uh, Kate Rubin's suit. Kate Rubin's being the uh, astronaut in the suit with the red stripes. We also were able to see some of the first high definition views from a uh, space station, um, from a spacesuit today. Using that new HECA camera, you can see mounted on the left uh, from our view here of Kate Rubin's suit.
Sergei Kuzverchkov coming into frame on the left there. Russian cosmonaut that flew with uh, Kate Rubens on the Soyuz to the International Space Station. Taking some photos as uh, Suichi Noguchi there, the lead suit IV, uh, works with uh, Mike Hopkins in the background there. Both working to uh, remove the tools and tethers that they, uh, that our two spacewalking astronauts used throughout the duration of today's spacewalk. And again, they'll uh, continue to uh, doff or remove the suits, including the helmets and gloves. We'll continue to provide coverage uh, throughout that process. Another handover between satellites providing video from the International Space Station. You saw Victor Glover's helmet and gloves are off. Noguchi and, Hop and uh, Mike Hopkins will continue to work on uh, Kate Rubin's suit, doing the same, removing her uh, tethers and tools, uh, and then eventually her helmet and gloves. After that, we'll conclude today's, space today's uh, spacewalk coverage.
You want to put the O2 also? Okay. Yeah. 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 As we near the end of uh, today's coverage of uh, this spacewalk to install the first modification kit on uh, one of the station's solar panels, that is the first of six planned modification kits. Uh, this is uh, in preparation for some of the upcoming solar arrays. There will be a set of six arrays uh, that will be mounted on uh, in front of some of the existing arrays and simply augment the power and continue to provide power uh, for the uh, research and uh, commercial activities planned uh, aboard the International Space Station for years to come. Now, as we near the conclusion of our coverage, we do have more uh, for you to tune into on NASA TV. Tomorrow, we will conduct a series of briefings uh, to preview some of the upcoming activities for the next SpaceX uh, crew rotation mission. This is NASA's SpaceX Crew 2 mission. Aboard is NASA's Shane Kimrow and Megan MacArthur, uh, Aki Hoshide of JAXA, and uh, Tama Pesquet of the European Space Agency, ESA. We'll have a series of briefings starting at 11.30 a.m. Central Time, 12.30 p.m. Eastern. Uh, first is an overview of the Crew-2 mission uh, with a few of our uh uh, with a few directors representing our various agencies as well as SpaceX. And then we'll have a chance to speak with that crew, Crew 2, at 2 p.m. Eastern Time, the Crew News Conference. Again, Shane Kimbrough, Megan MacArthur, Aki Hoshide, and Thomas Pesquet. We'll then have a series of round robin interviews in the afternoon starting at 3.30 p.m. Eastern uh, throughout the remainder of the day. Then, of course, this spacewalk is uh, set up for the next upcoming spacewalk. We did a little bit of the work on the 4B channel, of course, completing the 2B channel. Uh, but we start at that uh, upper triangle bracket, and uh, Kate Rubens will go out the hatch uh, and finish some of that work, this time with Soichi Noguchi, who's currently helping uh, to remove the gloves and uh, eventually the helmet of Kate Rubens. That's scheduled for Friday, March 5th, and the coverage for that will start one hour later at 4 a.m. Central Time, 4.30, rather, a.m. Central Time, 5.30 a.m. Eastern. Now again, that will be to uh, finish the installation of the modification kit. The tasks for that spacewalk are set to look uh, somewhat identical to what we just saw today. They may even squeeze in a few other tasks. And of course, uh, March 5th, or perhaps a, a spacewalk in the future after March 5th, uh, the crew may uh, address some of the work done on uh, the 2B power channel today.
Suichi Noguchi and Mike Hopkins will continue to work with uh, Victor Glover off to the left and Kate Rubens, who successfully conducted a seven hour and four minute spacewalk today, installing the modification kit on the 2B power channel in preparation for some future upgrades. New solar arrays are coming to the International Space Station. With their helmets off and the suit doffing uh, continuing, we'll go ahead and wrap up our coverage for today. Of course, tune in to the next spacewalk next Friday. Until then, this is Mission Control, Houston.